Hello, hello everyone. Uh, this is a Grand Master Art on Actions, and uh, I'm back with my next bootcamp edition. So this time it's uh, going to happen on Friday. I think I already found a nice uh, time frame for that. Uh, typically on Sundays. Uh, yeah, but this Sunday, some of you might be aware, I'll have a special adoption match against Pongruber, another fellow streamer from chess.com, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try to make it quite exciting and fun. Yeah, that's going to happen on uh, Sunday. Uh, you're the one who suggested the bootcamp. Yeah, I guess, I guess you did. I was uh, considering to do another topic, but I... I uh, realized that uh, the Catalan opening, which was your suggestion, right? Um, it will it will tackle this topic, which is changing the order of the moves to get a desired position in Catalan. There's a lot of examples like that, so I sort of combine it together. And um, so we're going to talk about the Catalan, right? So what is the Catalan? What is the Catalan opening? He doesn't know how to say my name as long as he doesn't say some complete nonsense, that's fine. So the Catalan, the classic sense of Catalan, what we know is d4, knight of 6 or d5. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's start with perhaps d5, c4, e6, knight of 3, knight of 6 and g3. So this is the Catalan and um, it is quite, quite popular. I mean, right now, to be honest, at the top level, I think knight, knight c3 and uh, setups with bishop g5 or bishop f4, they dominate, but this uh, trend, it uh, tends to change. So my goal during this uh, bootcamp is try to explain the basic and most important concepts, right? I mean, I, I know Catalan quite okay, right? I mean, I've played it myself with white and black at the Grandmaster level against very good players. I won't pretend that I know every single detail, but probably more than an average player, definitely. Right. Um. Yeah, before, before I start this, um, about the Sunday, I wanted to add that in addition to the, this adoption match against um, Pongruber, which will start uh, 12, what is it, PM, AM, 12 midday, <laughs> I always mix up, what, what is it, is it AM or PM? At uh, 12 midday, uh, the start will be the start of the match, and after that, I will have my arena, arena for the chess club. Yeah, I, I decided I need to organize this sooner or later anyway, because I haven't done it for something like one month. So if you're used to play in my arenas of my official chess club at chess.com, it's going to be there. Yeah, it's going to be there. I'm going to play myself. I just need to create a tournament before and and um, and just uh, run it. Right. Uh, in the meantime, again, another feature which I started with the last stream is analysis of the viewers games but I think I'm gonna make it slightly different this time so since the topic of today's bootcamp is the Catalan opening if you have games in Catalan you could send them in I think that would be more interesting otherwise I will randomly select some nidor for I don't know some some bird opening which makes uh, has nothing in common with the Catalan, so maybe you can try to keep in the same category, so you can send in your games in the Catalan, which you have, which you have played. Maybe you don't understand something, and I'll analyze it live. Okay, enough of this, and uh, let me start with something. Otherwise, I'm just blabbering here. So, what's the purpose? What's the purpose of White's move G3? Yeah, you can send it to my Discord channel. Uh, in my Discord channel, I've created a special subcategory, live analysis. Just copy and paste the PGN, and um, you should be able to do it. So anyway, why G3? Why why White is even doing this? Why White is not playing something simple like E3, Knight C3, or even, I, mean, I don't know, Knight BD2? So why exactly G3? Um, one of the uh, classical ideas of the Catalan is to press for this powerful 
not yet, but it's going to be a powerful light square bishop. So, for example, black gets greedy and he plays something like d takes on c4. I mean, it's not really super greedy approach, but it's a, it's a normal move. I just want to show you some basics, right? So, let's say white plays bishop g2. Bishop g2, black wants to keep the pawn, but I mean b5 immediately is slightly risky because of a4. So black might play something like c5. Yeah, it's, I think, open Catalan, you say. Okay, I mean, I don't know the subtitle. So let's say c5, short castle. Um, of course, black can play knight c6, but okay, for the sake of simplicity, let's say I am taking here, knight e4. And let's say black plays bishop e7, check something like knight e7 and queen c4. So this type of position is essentially one of the most important positions in the Catalan. It seems white has nothing, right? I mean, it's a symmetrical position and the black has no real weaknesses. And sometimes people get confused because of this and they think they're doing just fine. On, on the contrary, this is a very powerful bishop on g2. And very often, black will be struggling to develop this bishop on c8. So it's quite difficult to actually develop it, because obviously there is no b6 and bishop b7, and black might think about some rook b8, but it might run into some bishop f4, and black is struggling. Black is typically struggling because of this powerful bishop, and this is in various setups one of the so-called minimal advantages for white and white is always white is always quite happy quite happy to reach this right um white is playing the catalan very often very often white doesn't really mind temporary sacrifice the pawn on c4 so if you have some objections like i mean you don't want to give away the pawn on c4 and you're concerned and you'll be thinking about how to recapture it in three moves just don't play the catalan yeah it, it's not meant for this i mean you are not sacrificing the pawn on c4 so that you would recapture in two moves so for example let's say g3 d takes bishop g2 and Black could play something like, there's a number of interesting moves, let's say something like a6 or knight c6 is a possibility to protect the pawn on c4, so a6, short castle, and what was it here? I already don't remember, yeah, was it here, b5. So b5, uh, but the idea that knight e5 is met by, I think it was knight e5, and typically in these types of positions, White is quite happy to sacrifice the pawn on c4, and he is relying either on a4, something like a4, um, bishop b7, and b3 is quite a common idea. Sacrifice the pawn, gain some activity, and let's say black accepts it. C takes, probably, I guess, queen takes on b3 c6 and white is looking towards a big attack at the center and the king set so e4 knight of six and something like i don't know i mean um, rook e1 or bishop b2 yeah i guess bishop b2 is a possibility and white is marching forward with a lot of forces at the king side so it might be something like a four short castle maybe a five and probably you need to develop the pieces at the queen side first but that is one of the ideas so white is sacrificing the pawn on c4 in order to accelerate the development gain initiative at the king side and gain a powerful pawn center who is right it really depends how you are playing it out right so about, about various interesting um, nuances, how you can try to trick your opponent, I'm going to talk slightly later because there are various interesting tricks. Um, many people with black, they're playing the same setup pretty much against any opening. So for example, d5, e6, knight f6, 
bishop e7 is very popular approach and works pretty much against anything against anything unless of course white plays e4 just d5 e6 knight f6 bishop e7 short castle so catalan is quite inevitable how we can try to trick this i'll tell you in a moment hello code boy all right let's go back d4 knight f6 c4 okay this time i started with knight f6 doesn't really matter no i, I mean there's some nuances but okay i mean normally it doesn't really matter so d5 and g3 hey boss stefan how are you so black here has number of choices black can take on c4 and typically when black is ready to take on c4 it makes sense to start it before bishop e7 so you if for example you're playing with black you need to understand what you want to get from this game so you can take on c4 and try to keep the pawn or you are giving a check on b4 trying to force the bishop on d2 with a couple of interesting positions or you're playing a closed position so closed position here is for black to play c6 now which is better i mean whatever you prefer everything is possible so again d takes on c4 is another option and after bishop g2 black plays typically knight c6 a6 and tries to keep the pawn on b5 i mean you could you could of course immediately uh, try to recapture the pawn here with queen a4 check and i i know many people are doing this but again it loses the purpose of the entire catalan <laughs> why are you even playing this if you are immediately trying to recapture the pawn because it's making you uncomfortable just don't play the catalan right and something like knight bd7 queen takes on c4 yeah a6 and about this position one of the rules for black is that black is almost always doing great if he is gonna manage to put the bishop on b7 so that's the rule so this is why this line is not so good so for example white would play something like bishop g2 b5 queen i don't know where it goes b3 or c2 because queen c6 is just a waste of time bishop f4 i don't think it really works there's some interesting gambit takes takes and rook c8 i mean it doesn't matter so let's say b5 queen c2 bishop b7 and black is just fine yeah so you want to avoid this position and you want to have your bishop on g2 so that this bishop doesn't come out on b7 and that's the reason and that's the reason why you're starting with g3 where you're starting with g3 and let's say black is playing here d takes on c4 because he saw free pawn and now after bishop g2 black would love to put the bishop on b7 but it's easier said than done i mean it's almost impossible to do it immediately i mean there is some ideas for example uh what was the line again i'll try to say from memory b5 a4 obviously a6 is impossible because you take the pawn and there remains the pin and the c6 just closes this bishop so i don't know really do you need to rush with this b3 or just keep this idea in your mind so you could just continue either with knight e5 immediately it makes perfect sense to start with this move because you're threatening not only to take on c6 but take on b5 so knight e5 is going to be the only move and i just play something like short castle bishop b7 and yeah i mean i don't know really what's the most precise move here i guess something like e4 e4 knight f6 knight c3 um yeah pawn has to be protected and very often black black thinks like this i mean i've managed to keep the pawn i'm doing great it's not so easy i mean black has wasted so much time and this bishop on b7 is just a dead meat it's not doing anything so unless of course you're going to be very slow with white you're going to open the bishop and then just wait waste a lot of a lot of uh, tempos yeah so i'm not so sure about d5 here the engine says d5 is a possibility but again i would expect something like um f4 
I guess. Yeah, if our computer doesn't like it, it's one of the typical ideas. Sometimes after knight bd7, you can try to improvise with some crazy attacks with king f7, e5. I'm pretty sure there was some huge theory at some point. e5, knight e5, and f5. Yeah, again, I mean, guys, <laughs> I don't know very huge theory here. So I know the main rules, the main principles. I've played it in a number of games for white and black. Uh, I won't explain every single detail, of course, but the main ideas and the core ideas you'll understand. Yeah, thank you, ABC. That's enough of it, right? <laughs> That's an interesting nickname you got there. Yeah, so this is one of the ideas again, what why can try to employ, and especially in something like Blitz and playing online, and just try to figure it out how to play here because why is just storming four with everything he has got. So I don't know, takes and and takes and here and something like i don't know queen g4 something i mean makes perfect sense and and black is up a piece but his position his his king is in danger yeah i mean of course MG, engine doesn't really like my plan on the four i just recognize it from some point maybe some bishop g5 Knight bd7, remove the queen and then think about the four or five for g4 g5 and storm with everything front and just ignore what's happening here at the queen set or think about some b3 as well because at the right time this queen might be helping to execute some interesting tactical ideas on f7 i'll try to find some more games slightly later now i just want to explain the core ideas um yeah so for black here it doesn't make much sense to take the pawn on c4 and let's say after something like bishop g2 just ignore it let's play something like bishop e7 short castle short castle i mean it is possible of course but with the order of the moves it looks slightly weird another quite a popular approach for black is to play bishop b4 check now this check is a very very tricky check and one of the main ideas is black wants to provoke white from making a committal move so for example bishop d2 seems to be the automatic move and black here has a number of moves he has a5 he has c5 and usually these a5 and, and a5s and c5s they're directly linked with intention to take the pawn on c4 so for example um, i think it was something like c5 again i'm showing this from memory c5 bishop g2 d takes short castle focusing on very quick development um something like knight c6 i guess a3 takes and takes yeah, this looks extremely logical. I think I've seen it somewhere before. So again, the idea, it seems, wait a second. I mean, what is this? I mean, black is just up a pawn. Now he's going to be two pawns up. So for example, c takes, knight takes on c4, and short castle. So again, it, think, it, it seems that black is doing so great. He has this extra pawn. He has this powerful center pawn. But now suddenly, after... Let's say rook c1. How do you stop knight e5 from him coming? So knight e5, the threat is take, take, open this bishop. And uh, let's say black is just trying somehow to develop the pieces. Rook b8, knight e5. Now have a look at this powerful Catalan bishop on g2. Takes, takes. Bishop d7 already is worse for black because you manage to regain the pawn on d4. The bishop is so much more powerful. And despite the fact that there is a symmetrical pawn structure on the board, black is considerably worse. So black might not do it. And instead of something like knight e5 takes takes, he cannot play b6. By the way, with the pawn on b6, very often black is suffering for this weakness on c6. I mean, here obviously it just drops an exchange. 
But this weakness on c6 is a very common idea, very common theme in the Catalan. So let's say black does something like, I mean, I don't know, even queen d6. Yeah, queen d6. I guess just go back here and something like queen d2. So again, the question is, how does black play here? And does it really feel that black has this extra pawn? Very difficult. So I, was, I would assume you want to position the bishop on b7, something like b6, uh, rook d1, bishop b7, and finally, finally, black managed to trade the bishop. And even this position is slightly unpleasant. Because white is enjoying some space advantage. Hello, Marco. Uh, the knight wants to go to c6, strengthened by the pawn b4, b5. Another, another, another typical idea is to fight for the space advantage and shut out the knight on f6 with moves like f3 and e4. So that was just one example how the game might proceed. And this is why experienced players... Uh, very often they trick their opponents because they just see this pawn and not in the next couple of moves it is possible to regain but the problem is he is going to be in sort of a very difficult position very difficult position a couple of moves later so c5 and a5 i mean they're completely playable i mean if you really want after c5 you can just take of course yeah you can just take on b4 that's okay yeah, but the problem is, you're not going to have the c3 square for your knight. And black, I guess, is just doing more or less or fine. Something like um, knight e2, b6, a5, knight a6. Okay, I blundered the pawn. Not b6, certainly. Something like short castle, b6, bishop b7, a5, knight a6. At this pawn on b4, I wouldn't really say it's a weakness. It's a pawn. It's a pawn. It takes away some... Uh, critical squares so very good players actually don't really go for this line normally and they're aiming for the power of this catalan bishop so this catalan bishop on g2 is the so-called soul of the position for white so again bishop g2 i guess you have to take yeah, d takes short castle maybe something like knight c6 okay this i think I already sort of showed yeah, knight c6, a3, sacrifice. I mean, black would take with the knight as well. And something like knight takes on c4, and seemingly, oh, I managed to trade the queens. Takes and takes. But still, this position is unpleasant. Yeah, this position is unpleasant, because how do you get the bishop out? And black has managed to trade queens. He's up a pawn. I mean, what else? What else do you want from this position? But... Try to play this position from black. And uh, let's say he's going to try to play rook b8, bishop d7 something. And after b4, what do you play here? So white is extremely active. So c takes, a takes. Now this pawn is under attack. a6, knight b6. And black is about to be paralyzed. And at some moment he'll be wishing to give back this pawn, just leave me alone. Yeah, because this position is um, already becoming very, very unpleasant. The castles be better because of Hayed of 96. You mean for black? Uh, this 96 check, I'm not so sure if that is such a big threat. Maybe it is. Check here, rook c1. And I guess bishop d7. I have a feeling that the king on e7 is doing just fine. But I just wanted to show this uh, example that just don't over-evaluate the importance of the pawns. I mean, it's just a pawn. It's just a pawn. And much more important is your peace activity and the control of the squares. And this is why so often white outscores and out maneuvers black because black thinks i managed to take a pawn everything is great so that's the reason that's the reason why very good players actually what they're doing they give a check on b4 bishop b4 check i mean it's a good check i'll explain why it is good and then black typically plays either bishop e6 which is the classical choice 
or bishop d6. But let's imagine, let's imagine black is not doing this check. I mean, is this really so important? It's not. I mean, it's uh, not so important, but not so necessary. It's not really so necessary, but let's check something simple. Um, bishop e7 immediately without the check. Bishop g2, short castle, and short castle. Now, in this position, black again has a choice. He still has a choice. He can try to take on c4, which is super solid, but this pawn is not going to hold. Or he can go for the closed setup with either knight bd6, a knight bd7 immediately, or c6. <clears throat> so let's imagine. Let's imagine he is going to do d dx on c4. Yeah, d dx on c4, it is perfectly possible. And based on what we know, now the obvious question is why? Why don't we want to play knight e5? Because we're opening the bishop on g2, and the knight on e5 is causing some problems against the pawn uh, against the bishop on c8, and white is about to recapture the pawn on c4. So seemingly it looks great. So let's imagine. I mean, black is doing something normal. He is doing something like c5. C5. Um Okay, I think I already can sacrifice the pawn by knight a3, but I just wanted to show something basic. Okay, let's just say I'm going to take here. Let's say bishop c5. It's not the best, but just want to show you the idea again. Knight c3. This pawn is going nowhere. Knight bd7 and knight x on c4. And again, again. Yeah, it's too slow, don't you? Too slow, but just want to show the idea. And again, black is suffering because of this bishop. Rook b8 is going to be bishop f4. Something like knight b6, I guess a very good square for the knight always is on e5. So knight f3, e5, and knight d3. Knight on d3 is a classical position, classical place for the knight. Because the knight on d3 controls so many squares around, and the bishop on g2 is bothering black. With this development, you just try to open the position somehow. I don't know. I mean, queen b3, rook d1, bishop f4, maybe a4, a5, I don't know, and try to get to this pawn and open the position. Of course, it's easier. I mean, it's much more complicated than this. And after d takes, there's queen c7. I mean, it's not, not so easy. So why could try to play something like knight a3? Again, the same spirit. You don't care about the pawn, you are caring for a fast development. So c takes on d4, knight c4, how do you play here? I mean, this pawn is completely irrelevant. a6, a4, a5, thank you for the weakness. White wants to play bishop f4, rook c1, queen d2, rook d1. How are you going to protect this pawn? Why not knight a3 and not knight d2? Hey, Ska. Um, maybe. Yeah, maybe it is possible. You mean here? Mm, yeah, I guess it's the same. Uh, I guess it's the same. Knight d2. But uh, one of the reasons why the Catalan... Mm, normally, the knight is positioned on a3 because it extra stops the move b5. I mean, sure. Okay, okay. There's still the bishop on g2. But one of the reasons why this knight is on a3, yeah, it takes additionally control of the b5 square and doesn't close the bishop. Yeah, you could play something like bishop f4 or bishop g5. Maybe this control of the squares is going to be important. And still your queen is slightly protecting the d4 square. So again, here, knight c4. So I imagine black wants to trade off some pieces badly. Something like, again, knight d7. Queen takes, I don't know, I mean, something like knight e5 and queen e5. And again, how do you develop the queen side? Okay, happy to hear that, Scott. And yeah, so again, let's go back to the original question. So the original question is, why does many pe why don't many people play this knight e5? And the answer 
is 966. 966 is the modern theory. I mean, it's already not so modern. Everybody knows this who has studied the Catalan, that 966 is the way you want to respond against this annoying threat. I mean, C5 is playable, but I think C5 is going to be always slightly worse. Knight C6 is the big move here. So again, it seems, well, what is this? I mean, why don't I just collect the pawn on C6? So something like Knight C6, B takes, Bishop C6. Yeah, that, that's the first thing which comes in my mind. I mean, why don't just collect the pawn? It's a free pawn. And with the tempo, it makes so much sense. But there, in reality, black is becoming in incredibly active. And the pawn on c4 is not even a weakness. I mean, black is ahead in development. You are in no time even to pressure the pawn on c4. Queen c2 drops the pawn. Queen a4 drops the pawn. Uh, knight a3 I just take. Knight e2 I just take. I mean, how do you even pressure the pawn on c4? Yeah, so knight c3 developed, there's a pawn under attack, so this is a good position. Of course, there is, there is another continuation. And after, let's say, knight x on c6, b takes, there's a very interesting move, knight a3. And I could try to show, uh, show you this game, which was played between Shakriar Mamedyarov against uh, Wesley So in the 2019 Riga FIDE Grand Prix. I know this because I was doing the commentary. <laughs> I was there, I was there, so I, I just remember the game. Yeah, so Wesley played immediately bishop e7, short castle, short castle, d takes, and knight e5. And I'll tell you this, knight e5 at the professional level, I think it's believed to be drosh hey Woody, how are you <laughs> i think it's believed to be drosh sort of drosh i mean that's the belief that black is doing fine and when shahriar is playing 95 he definitely expects that wesley knows this he knows the line he knows knight c6 but he had prepared a very interesting idea so after 95 knight c6 wesley played knight takes on c6 B takes, and here comes the idea with knight a3. So knight a3, um, white wants to recapture the pawn on c4. Uh, bishop a6 I think is just bad. Yeah, because of queen a4, we are going to take here, here, and black is just left with a, with a bad pawn structure. So knight a3 sort of forces, forces black to take on a3. B takes on a3, and I don't remember which is the best move, either knight e5 or bishop a6. Uh, Wesley played bishop a6, and here is a very tricky move. Queen d2. And queen d2, one of the ideas for white is to play queen a5, e4, a4, bishop a3, and play against the bad bishop. Yeah, I just want to show you this is the modern theory i'm not gonna dwell too much on this this is the top level top level stuff uh c3 was bad because of i guess simply queen c3 sacrificing the pawn very powerful bishops and whatnot so the game progressed like this rook b8 here 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 and i think a4 was still okay but shakriya launched a very interesting novelty with a3 and I think the idea was to play bishop d2, bishop b4. It had never been played before. And when I was doing the commentary with Yevgeny Miroshnichenko in the studio, I don't think we really realized that this is a novelty. Or, or I think I was checking the game in the database and I didn't find anything. But anyway, what happened here? After rook b8, e4, Wesley very quickly collapsed. And here apparently he had to pick up quite a difficult defense with knight e4 and queen d4 okay listen i'm not gonna talk too much about this game i just want to show you want to you show you this idea that knight e5 is possible but knight e5 comes with two ideas one idea is knight x on c6 this is a quite a forced line and very typically 
the queen goes to a5 so if you are working with an engine don't trust it too much the engine says here black is doing better black is doing better here but in reality it's not easy to play this and it's very very easy to trick black so that's a very interesting line and after the game Shakriar said that uh, he had just played this uh, for one game to surprise Wesley he needed to find knight x on e4 which Mamedyarov knew Wesley did not find it and he just lost the game in a spectacular fashion and this was in, in semi-final I think so the stakes are very high winners of the a winner of the FIDE Grand Prix they qualify for the candidates so that's the game of the highest level the other continuation here after knight e5 knight c6 is bishop takes on c6 this has some modest popularity so the idea is after knight c6 doesn't matter where the queen goes the old line here is I'm trying to remember either queen c2 or queen a4 and black typically plays this position yeah so it is playable the engine says it's equal you know I would say like this a smart player will always select the opening and the variation according to the time control and what he wants to accomplish in the game so it's not always like that i'm gonna play this against everybody every time control for example this position with black it's so much easier to play in blitz because white needs to be super super accurate i might play this with white if i have a lot of time to understand all of the nuances or not to fall under a strong attack so i think the line was here knight c3 um e5 queen h4 and h6 so white was typically trying to close this bishop and then normally black would somehow win the pawn back at the queen side somehow precisely i already don't remember to be honest hey steve uh there have been some interesting developments in this line ever since and for example uh, what was the line again? There have been some attempts to play b3. So obvious idea is c takes bishop a3, b2, bishop b2, and then somehow white is aiming for a better pawn structure. Thank you, Marco. But there was another move. Um, I'm trying to remember what was it. There was another interesting idea. Okay, I think I already forgot. It was played by Levon Aronian. I remember that he played it, but I don't remember what he played. But anyway, it doesn't change the objective evaluation of this entire line. It is drawish. Sort of drawish. What is checking some ideas? I'm talking about the professional level here. But normally, black is doing fine. so i would say like this if you want to play catalan study 95 as a surprise weapon fire it out every fifth game every sixth game that's okay that's fine i mean you want to test your opponent if he knows this line and there's going to be a story i'm going to show you a game where exactly i did that very tricky over the moves so i decided okay this is the time i want to test my opponent because i don't think he knows it so well i mean i sort of <laughs> i sort of know it okay myself i wouldn't say i'm a huge expert there but i was absolutely sure my opponent knows much less than me so i thought this is a great moment to play 95 but normally when you're playing a normal classical catalan game against a good opponent you don't play 95 unless it's a one move a one game surprise and you have prepared something so instead of this after d takes on c4 white <laughs> not easy to avoid yeah don't play e6 d5 <laughs> i mean there are many interesting fun lines 
You don't have to play e6, d5. <laughs> That's the easiest to avoid the Catalan. So black would play, let's say, again, c5, I don't think this... Okay, here white plays queen c2. Uh, trying to recapture the pawn. And here again, black, it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea to push c5 unless you are Capablanca and you know perfectly how to defend this position. So without much knowledge on the position, I could already play d takes, something like bishop takes, and either take with the queen or knight b2, knight c4, knight e5, rook d1, bishop f4. This is a big problem again. And black is not in time to position the bishop on b7. Because, for example, here, b6 drops the game due to knight g5. So this is an idea which you would have to know. Because knight e5 is a mate. And you cannot protect against this covered attack. But this is more commonly known in if black would play here b5. That is possible. It is certainly possible. And white plays a4. So here c6 is a big mistake. c6 takes takes, knight g5, and black resigns. Because again, knight d5 is impossible because of queen takes on h7, mate in one, or black loses huge material uh, losses. Of course, there is a line to play b4. Yeah, again, this is something I don't know really so well. Uh, but the idea to play after queen takes on c4, black is incredibly active. Bishop a6, queen c2, and either c5, then knight c6. So it's all about who is going to play it out more active. Nobody is counting the pawns. It only matters who has the active pieces. Um, here, knight g5, I'm not so sure why it's not possible. Ah, I just sacrificed the exchange. Okay. I didn't know this line, to be honest. Um, yeah, about the close setup, I'm going to... I'm gonna talk about that i i haven't got there yet i haven't got there yet so normally here as far as i understand is why it doesn't rush really to take it because bishop a6 is a problem and uh, knight g5 is still c6 so we are not threatening to win anything so i guess something like knight was it knight f to d2 was there this line i think so so that's another thematical sacrifice. I think so, unless I'm mixing up. And queen takes on d4. Knight... Oh, just a sec. That drops rook. Sorry about that. So let's say c6. And I think it was knight takes on c4. So again, don't worry too much about the pawn. You have very active pieces. Queen takes on d4, I guess, has to be played. And something like rook d1, queen c5, you're winning million tempos. I guess knight bd2, knight b3, e4, bishop f4. This extra pawn for black, it just, it's just not relevant at all. And again, that's how experienced players, they are catching lesser experienced players. Is they're offering a pawn. So it's like, there's a pawn, do you want it? Do you want it? So, oh, yes, I want it. <laughs> bad, bad mistake. I mean, you don't want a pawn. You want to have active pieces. So b4, I think it's playable, but I'm not sure about the reputation for that. Um, black plays here, typically a6. But there's one little thing I want to mention here. It's the so-called Bukovshin variation. Even Bukovshin was a Russian grandmaster who unfortunately died, died tragically a couple of years ago, and he was trying to popularize the move b6. And it's quite interesting, actually. I don't know really at the top level what is the current state of the t of this line, but here after 95, this was Bukovshin's idea. After 95, because here again, knight g5, just play c6. And what is the knight doing on g5? Not much. So here, after knight e5, black would play queen takes on d4. Now you have to take queen e5. Um, 
I think it was... I don't remember. Okay, this was, I guess, bad because of bishop a6, queen takes on c4. But I think the, I think the common knowledge here was that black is doing okay. Sort of doing okay. Yeah, two pawns for the exchange, quite interesting dynamic position. And at some point I noticed that people are not even playing, people are not even playing 95 at a good level. They start to play bishop g5. Bishop g5, and now bishop b7 is a mistake. Take, take, knight g5. We already know this. So that's already one nice way how to trick the opponent. Uh, so after bishop g5, I think it was knight d5. Takes, queen takes. I'm pretty sure not queen c4, because again, queen c4 is bishop a6 and c5, and again, black is incredibly active. Is d5 necessary for black to call the Catalan? I guess. I guess it is, unless it's not a Catalan. Unless you somehow can take with the d-pawn on c4 through d6, c5, c4. I doubt it's possible. Yeah, I guess it's pos It's necessary to play d5. Um, you never played Catalan on purpose, would he? I mean, you should. It's definitely an interesting line. So, after queen takes on e7, I mean, white should play, I guess, something simple. Knight bd2, and still sort of better. So, bishop b7, knight c4, knight e7. Okay, right. Black managed to put the bishop on b7. That's an achievement. I mean, nobody is arguing about that, but still. I mean, white is enjoying some space advantage. So, e4, I guess... Knight, I don't know where it goes. Knight b4, queen e2, c5, and I guess just take, take, a3 here, b4. And again, again, black is sort of suffering in the symmetrical pawn structure. Maybe, I mean, knight e3 was better, but uh, let's say knight e7 e5, knight d6, rook d1, rook c1, and despite the fact that this bishop is standing on b7, I mean, it's just not easy. I mean, the symmetrical pawn structure is not really that important. Yeah, so this is the so-called book option line. So b6, if you are meeting this, this means somebody has studied this line. It used to be popular, something like... Uh, I don't know, three, four years ago. Uh, I think even at the highest level they were playing this, they were testing the move knight e5. And at some moment people just realized, you just play bishop g5 and that's it. Yeah, You just take bishop g, play bishop g5, threatening to take and play knight g5. You just recapture the pawn with the knight and just have slightly better position. And ever since, I don't think people really play this line so much. I mean, occasionally somebody does it. But still, I mean, it's important to know the idea. Um... Opening book still calls it a Catalan, Flash of Steel. <laughs> okay. So after D takes, sorry, yeah, Queen C2. Black needs to do something here. And this is where Black plays A6. So again, we understand the principle. Black wants to position the bishop on B7 and normally... If he positioned the bishop on b7, he is doing okay. So we, we know this principle. And um, people used to play queen takes on c4 some years ago. I don't think they're playing it right now. So there was some very big theory after b5, uh, queen c2, bishop b7. There's so many tricky moves like uh, bishop d2 with the idea to play bishop a5. There are some bishop e4 here. Uh, bishop b7, bishop f4, oh my goodness, there's so many uh, very high level games trying to pressure on this very tiny weakness on c7, but it's not easy, it's not easy to capitalize it, and um, if black plays c5, he's gonna equalize the game, mostly, in most occasions, 
Yeah, I'll cover the closed cattle later, at least some ideas anyway. And I think at a good level, much more popular choice here is to play A4. You are playing A4 now, and again, we already know what is going to happen after C5. We are quite happy. We are quite happy just to take. But again, I guess it should be just okay to sacrifice the pawn and go for this structure. Something like knight c6. Uh, okay, maybe it's not such a good idea. I just wanted to show you. Rook d1, knight e5, bishop f4. But I guess it's not, not the best. So after c5, just take. Bishop takes and maybe now. Maybe now knight d2, something like bishop d7, try to get the bishop out. And I think in this position, this idea is quite important. Again, one of the common ideas, if the bishop is going to launch to c6, you want to meet it with knight e5. Knight e5, bishop, e6, bishop c6, you just, I guess, take take, you just take, take, and black is just suffering. Black is just suffering because of this weakness, something like bishop f4, rook d1, rook c1, knight e5, and try to get to this pawn. I mean, it, it is possible there was something better. Instead of this, for example, the engine says you just allow the bishop to land on c6. Okay. I mean, maybe there are some occasions when you can allow to do that. Just want to explain the idea that typically, if the bishop wants to get to c6, normally white plays knight e5. Although, I mean, sometimes white just allows it here. And uh, yeah, this is going to be quite difficult to break through. Rook d1. Nah, there's nothing. Nah, there's nothing. I mean, if the bishop is on c6, I don't imagine here white can really hope for much, but it is still playable, I guess, with the same idea of knight e5. Takes, takes, and something like queen c7, maybe. Bishop f4 and white still pushing. Still pushing. Okay. Let's go back. So, a4 is the popular move. And now, after a4, black plays this move, bishop d7. And I don't think there is anything you can do about it. Because knight e5 here wasn't so good because of bishop c6. Takes, takes. I don't remember this line just a second. Or was it? Takes, takes. Ah, this was the drawish line. Yeah, this was the drawish line because... Uh, bishop takes, b takes, queen c4. It seems, oh, we are doing great. Yeah, because we managed to create these double pawns, but in reality, look at the development. I mean, black is ahead in development by two tempi. So, something like queen d5 followed by c5. Who is fighting for the advantage here? Definitely not white. I mean, these weaknesses on c6 and c7, they don't matter. Yeah, now I start to remember. I think the idea was after knight c6, knight c6, e3, knight a5, here. And the problem for white, he's missing one tempo. One tempo. Black is in time to play c5. Rook c8. Take. Take. 97, draw greed. I, I don't see how to play here for the win. Knight takes on c5 is going to be incoming. The advantage of two bishops is just insignificant. And something like bishop a3, I think there are already some games in the database like this. Some GMs uh, supposedly they are fighting it out, but they both of them, they know this is a draw. So a5, completely symmetrical position, swap of every single piece, draw greed. So that's the reason why uh, knight e5 is not so good. So white plays queen takes on c4 and bishop c6. And here, I'm not so sure. 
I'm not so sure what is the best line here because normally um, white chooses but between two setups it is either bishop f4 or bishop g5 of course starting with knight c3 let's say um, knight c3 uh, just a second what's this line oh I think I mixed up sorry okay okay I think it was bishop f4 first yeah uh, bishop f4 first so that there is no b5 and knight d7 or bishop g5 for that matter knight c3 so this is one of those classical positions and I guess it's quite easy to play it out for white because white is going to play rook d1 rook c1 if possible maybe we can try to fight for some space advantage for that you need to position the queen on d3 so black plays something like knight b6 queen d3 um knight e5 and it's difficult for you to push for this e4 but as long as you're making some normal looking moves as rook d1 rook c1 and think about this move knight e5 white is always sort of pressing always sort of pressing right uh another idea was to play bishop g5 immediately there are some nuances by provoking the h6 but even here you can just take on f6 play i guess rook d1 and prepare to play knight e5 rook c1 knight e5 let's say black does something silly i mean i don't know let's say five to fix this as a weakness knight e5 takes takes and c6 so those typical positions they're pretty much common for the um d takes on c4 setup and black is inc uh, incredibly solid but one of the problems here for black he doesn't have an active plan so if he cannot really push at any given moment c5 because those bishops i'm sorry those knights are going to be extremely powerful at the white squares there's no active play at the center so what might just play something like e3 rook c1 queen e2 slowly somehow i don't know try to provoke the opponent into creating a weakness somewhere i don't know but this is considered to be quite quite a popular line hey yoko and the same the same idea is typically also something like bishop four uh, bishop f4, knight e7, knight c3. Um, what was the line again? I, I don't remember already. Knight e5. But normally you don't want to take on d5 yourself. And this is going to be something I'm going to talk about in the closed setup. So knight e5, black is quite happy to take with the pawn. I think so, at least. Does it? Okay, maybe not here. Okay, maybe not. Sorry, maybe not here. Yeah, maybe not here. Because typically black is quite happy with the pawn structure on d5 c6 and b7 but okay i'm gonna show you that in the closed setup another idea what black is sometimes doing here he is playing a5 to put the knight on a6 and b4 but much that doesn't change it doesn't change much from white's perspective just play knight c3 here rook d1 knight b4 rook c1 um maybe instead of the rook c1 immediately you could have played knight e5 yeah knight e5 let's say he takes takes and c6 and again this is quite a quite a classical position probably black needed to trade a couple of knights first and white already can take the center reposition the queen here and something like f3 g4 bishop g3 try to try to create something at the king side Hey, Shahir, how are you? All right. Um, that is the short intro of the um, a Queen C2. Um, for black, I don't think there's a lot of other choices here. It is possible to, pl possible to play C5, but I never really understood. I mean, why people are doing this maybe with the idea that the bishop inevitably gets to c7 for example c6 take b5 here and bishop b7 yeah this is possible 
you need a lot to learn learn a lot to play the Catalan. I think I'll tell in two hours the basic concept. So I mean you'll understand the basic concept, but you need to know which direction even to look. But it's not gonna be of course very hardcore theory, but I guess should be should be good enough to start. Here black wants to play a6, knight e7, and c5. But your ideas remain the same. Okay, okay, footy put, put it. Rook d1 here. And I can imagine at some point this early knight e5. This early knight e5 is a very common idea for uh, the Catalan to open the bishop and increase the pressure against the pawn on c6. So something like queen c8. Um, I don't know. I guess bishop g5 here. But this drops something, doesn't it? Takes. Although sometimes black regains the pawn. Yeah, maybe this wasn't the most accurate way to play it. I guess just take immediately here. As long as we're not missing a queen on c2. Take. Okay, this is some kind of a fantasy. Yeah, there's not much. There's not much. But uh, this idea of c6 and b5 is considered to be not really that popular. At least I haven't seen many games at top level recently. And um, I think they're mostly concentrating on the close setup, which is what I'm going to talk next. Ah, by the way, by the way, uh, I would like to remind that since uh, the previous stream, I've started a new initiative, which is analyzing the games of the viewers live. And since today is my boot camp and it's all about the Catalan, you could send me in your games in Catalan, what you've played in Catalan. And I could check it out. I could check it out. I'll try to cover the basic principles, the ideas, uh, what you should be aware of. And then I'll select the games if they will be sent in at my Discord channel. I think it is live analysis subcategory so if you want it you can send it i will try to review them but of course i cannot guarantee that every single game hey gm 500 right okay let's go further and finally finally we are getting to the closed setup the closed setup is d5 here and let's start with the basic bishop e7 here 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 and c6 this is perfectly okay but the major difference here is white is gonna play b3 knight bd7 here here and one of the interesting ideas is that white has access to knight e2 and e4. One of the ideas, and usually the bishop is rerouted to b2. So let's say black is doing something like bishop b7, bishop b2, let's say rook c8, e4. So e4, I mean... You don't want to take on c4 because I have a very powerful pawn center. D takes, knight e4, knight e4, and yeah, I'm not sure where is the difference. Let's say knight e4, knight f6, and black is struggling again. We are enjoying a very, very good center and very good bishops. So black is dreaming about c5, and this is something that you want to avoid, probably. So queen e2, let's say queen c7, and I think it was here. 
One of the classical ideas was just to play. I hope I'm not mixing it up. C5. Hope I'm not mixing it up. So this was one of the classical ideas, how white is normally playing it. To play rook c1, rook d1, and pressure against the pawn on c6. And this bishop on b7 is really one sad bishop. It's not doing much. So something like uh, b takes, d takes. It seems to be about symmetrical position, but in reality, every single endgame is going to be considerably worse for black. So I would just, uh, I don't know, maybe something like b4 and try to pressure this pawn here, here, here. Looks rather unpleasant. So this idea of pushing c5, stopping black's idea to open the position for his bishop is quite known. So let's say if you will do something else. Um, let's say rook d1, knight e4, bishop e4, c5. If you are giving this opportunity, you should always aim for d5. Because this position is just nothing. It's just nothing. I mean, it's maybe slightly better for white, but normally it's just nothing. So one of the core ideas also here is, if possible, to play d5. Takes, takes, create a passed pawn and try to create some problems here. Some problems here. Maybe even some Lasker's idea, I don't know. Queen H... I'm sorry, what was, the, what was it again? Takes, takes, check here, bishop g7, king g7, queen g4, and then somehow, I don't know, magically try to checkmate on h3. Okay, here probably it doesn't really work. So I imagine you want to be smart about this if you are given this opportunity, since after c5 you still have d5. So maybe don't rush with c5, play rook d1, Rook d8, rook c1, takes, takes. You're keeping the option to play after c5, d5. So if black plays something like, let's say here, bishop f6, now you can play c5. Yeah, I guess this is this is better. Yeah, this is better because you've won some tempos. And b takes again is going to be d takes, fixing this weakness. And something like b5, well, this looks just ugly. This looks incredibly ugly, and ideally, you would want to reposition your bishop here if possible. So, that's one of the reasons why, as far as I understand, this is one of the reasons why this is not really such a good setup for black. And also one of the reasons why black almost always gives a check on b4. So bishop b4 check. Now you see why this is so important. After bishop b4 check, bishop d2, bishop e7, here, castle, castle. And now if black is going to go for the same setup c6 b3 knight bd7 knight c3 and b6 you already see the difference for white it's not so easy to prepare e4 because the bishop is standing on d2 so bishop is standing on d2 and messing up with this idea to be rerouted to c1 and b2 and doesn't allow white to play knight e2 and push immediately e4 so that's one of the tricks why black is typically doing this. Um, maybe I want to add that after bishop d2, bishop e7, bishop g2, castle, castle, it doesn't make a lot of sense for black to take on c4 here. It makes no sense. Why is that? Because white has made an extra tempo with bishop d2. This is not a good position. So something like a6, I imagine I already want to take here. Because I know this idea of bishop d2 here is one of the core ideas for white. And I already want a tempo. So something like rook c1 definitely feels to be favoring white. Shakir, you started with b4, you got a Catalan? Really? 
<laughs> so if black is including bishop uh, bishop b4 you're welcome uh Futy port hey neil bruce yeah doing good doing good slowly showing some catalan ideas hope you're gonna appreciate that so after bishop e7 bishop g2 short castle short castle c6 yeah about the c6 yeah knight no 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 why doesn't one knight be to do white wants to play b3 knight c3 and knight d2 so this is the idea this is why this check was uh forced to be played but i want to mention here why black here is normally playing c6 why not b6 and sometimes many people don't understand this so the very obvious question why don't you play b6 immediately makes sense because i want to play bishop b7 i want to play something like i don't know c5 knight c6 or knight b7 looks good but there is one major difference now you take on d5 and this lesson i've learned from some queen's indian positions is as soon as in this kind of structure no sorry not queen's indian but nimzo yeah nimzo if um with a pawn structure f7 d e6 d5 black plays b6 oh footy but okay check it so then you want to take on d5 then you want to take on d5 yourself and it may seem wait a second i mean what's this so if black plays here e takes on d5 and seemingly everything is good he is gonna now suffer because of this weakness and black cannot play c6 anymore i think i should have explained it before here is that you never you almost never you don't want to take on d5 c takes e takes short castle c6 this is considered to be an excellent position for black no weaknesses whatsoever so he's gonna play something like bishop f5 knight e4 knight e7 maybe even bishop d6 and just uh, maybe a5 to stop your opponent advancement at the queen side and he's just enjoying a healthy pawn structure with no visible weaknesses but after b6 things are slightly different so now you take on d5 and he will take here on d5 you you already have one target at the queen side and he can never play c6 because this pawn is not protected by the pawn on b7 so let's say you are playing something like uh let's say okay let's let's say something normal knight c3 bishop b7 bishop f4 or rook c1 doesn't really matter rook c1 and now black has a question how is he gonna defend the pawn on c7 because you want to play bishop f4 and knight e5 so let's say something like here here and the threat is knight e5 it's rather unpleasant okay i mean technically it is possible to play c6 with a very passive position so you could play something like a3 maybe instead of a3 queen c2 rook d1 and slowly try to get to these pawns this bishop should have been somewhere here so black might think okay i mean i can try to play active and play c5 but c5 comes with a very big choice for black later because you just you just take on c5 maybe immediately i guess i guess you can play immediately yeah d takes and if black is ever gonna play bishop takes on c5 now this is a que isolated queen spawn structure you want to reposition one of your light pieces on d4 block the center and then focus on the spawn so i imagine i would play something like um bishop g5 bishop e7 and knight d4 now this is a dream position this is a dream position because the center is completely blocked you have created a great outpost on d4 and some ideas as knight e5 knight f5 knight a3 maybe and 
it's rather unpleasant. So I would expect black is going to play something like B takes. Yeah, this is more the spirit. This D takes, B takes, you have this sort of a center. But now the question is, is this really a good center or their weaknesses? And white has very often very annoying pressure against these pawns, especially with the Catalan bishop on g2. So let's say knight e5. Um, maybe knight e5 wasn't accurate, but okay, I mean, let's say knight c6 and knight d3, I guess. So how do you how do you defend them? Because I can always increase the pressure, increase the pressure, increase the pressure. And if you just move them forward, you're creating weaknesses. Something like knight a4, I collect a pawn. Or c4, I'm going to collect a pawn. d4 and... I don't know. Yeah, knight d5 looks great. And again, these are weaknesses. And usually this problem, it starts with the move b6. So I would say in every single position, very similar position, if my opponent is playing b6, for me it's like, okay, time to take on d5. I just recognize the pawn structure. Time to take on d5. I don't want him to allow to play b, uh, bishop b7 and c5. And if he takes here with the pawn, easy game. Knight c3, rook c1, bishop f4, knight e5. Try to pressure the this pawn. Try to provoke it to be played forward, now you just take, and either he's going to create himself an isolated pawn on d5, or those so-called hanging pawns. Not an easy decision. This is the reason why black is playing c6. This is the reason why he is playing c6, so that after b6, if you want to take on d5, black is just going to take with the c pawn, leaving no weakness behind. So, queen c2, yeah, I guess it's still the main move. Um, knight d7. And here I'm not so sure, again, what is the most accurate choice. This bishop on d2 is messing up a lot of times with our plans. So, otherwise, I could have played immediately knight c3, knight e2, and e4, which I already showed you before. And knight on d2 would protect the pawn on... Uh, c4. So this is why here one of the most popular choices is bishop f4. Uh, why bishop is on d2? Yeah, there was an intermezzo check, bishop b4 check. Yeah, this is um, the moment. It's important. It's important to give this check. It's important to give this check because you're just messing up with why it's set up. And the bishop on d2 doesn't do much. Uh, the problem with knight c3, I didn't explain this, is normally there is a rule that with the knight on c3, black almost always wants to take on c4. Because for white, it's going to be much more difficult to recapture the pawn on c4 with the queen. Um, knight bd2 is not where you always want to position your knight. So this is why very often, very often, black gives this check, bishop d2, bishop e7. Now this bishop on d2 feels to be slightly annoyance for white. Here, here, here. Of course, we are not going for the open position. Queen c2 looks fine. You mean here, right? c6, queen c2, knight d7. And very often this is why black plays, I'm sorry, white plays bishop f4 to keep more options on the board. Now, there is a very, very interesting maneuver for black, either now or a move later or two moves later. Very often black plays knight h5. And this is like, what? I mean, what is knight h5? I guess you don't want to give away this bishop. So, bishop c1, knight f6. Black, by repeating the moves, is trying to invite you to position the bishop on b2. And on b2, it's supposedly not as active as on f4. 
So you could try to continue with, I think it was, uh, Bishop E3, I don't think it really changes much. Because there's still knight f6 and knight g4 could be potential later. But okay, I mean, bishop e3 is a possibility. Bishop e3, though, stops your idea as to push e4. You're going to need a e4 idea. So I guess re retreat with the bishop on c1 back. Knight f6. And now you're still aiming for the idea to push e4. So I don't remember. Was it? I think it was simply knight e2 also good. Knight e2, b6, e4. And you're hoping that your opponent is going to tr try to trade either here or here with a good pawn center. But I guess black can just play something like bishop e7. Here, close the position. And I think it makes quite sense to close the position a little so that you can try to play it out as French defense. This is the French French defense structure, something like rook e1, h4, knight f1, knight h2, knight g4, bishop g5, and try to get to this pawn. And this bishop is terrible. White is enjoying some space advantage, and I guess this is the simplest move. To be honest, I don't understand these nuances so well because uh, there's some tricks with the order of the moves. For example, black play, uh, white might play b3 b6, rook d1, bishop b7, knight c3, and then bishop a6. Yeah. After white has played uh, knight c3, black is ready to waste time and play bishop a6, threatening to take on c4. And typically this is not what white wants to achieve. So I guess the simplest choice for white, the way I understand it, is if the bishop was on d2, start to play with the bishop f4. If knight h5 retreat to f retreat to c1, because the bishop on d2 just messes up with our position. If knight f6, because we already want to play e4 by the way, you want to play e4. Knight f6, now we play knight d2. We want to push e4, there is no longer the bishop on um, on d2. b6, e4. Um, it might be possible there's some bishop a6 though. About the bishop a6, I want to mention there's one trick you shouldn't fall into. Don't play queen a4. It looks extremely tempting. Looks extremely tempting to target the bishop, but there's almost always the idea to play b5. This intermezzo move is so many often times missed, and white is just um, not doing good. Maybe queen a6 somehow keeps the pawn. No, I guess it even doesn't. Yeah, so this is not good. So something like bishop a6, uh, you don't want to play queen a4, I guess. I guess b3. b3, c5, and black is trying something to capitalize on this. So takes, takes, and... Usually, somehow, this is in favor for white. So, if black doesn't do this, and he plays after bishop f4, he plays the normal-looking b6. Um, oh, did I miss, make, mix it up? Maybe, maybe I mixed it up. Maybe I should have started with rook d1. Bishop a6, rook e1. I think I already lost, lost the idea which moment you were talking about. I just want to show you this idea with knight e5. Yeah, I guess I already mixed it up. Yeah, I, I mixed it up. How did I mess it up? Um, queen c2, knight e7. What is here, rook e1? I think I just I just mixed up two lines. I just mixed up two lines. Yeah, this is this is completely playable. I mean, they look exactly the same. I mean, but one of the interesting ideas here is to include rook d1. 
And I wanted to show you this idea. After b6, have the option to play... Was there a knight e5 though? Yeah, it's a question about this move. Oh my goodness. I think I'm going to show you a game. Yeah, I'm, I'm showing everything from memory. And as you can see, I haven't played Catalan for some years. I'm keeping forgetting this. Just a second. I'm show you the game so that you'll understand the idea slightly better. Uh, just a second. I'll find it. Okay. Uh, this is my game I played some years ago against, um, yeah, of course, I mean, I, I uh, doing all of this from memory. So I, I'm just trying to show the ideas, but uh, actual theory, I just, I just have to check because I haven't played for a couple of years. And uh, I know ideas, of course, but if you're asking, asking me which is exactly the right order here, Bishop before, then Rook D1, I just, I just uh, can forget it. Yeah, so again, this uh, check on b4, bishop g2, here, here, knight d7, queen c2, c6. We just saw this position. Okay, okay, so it was rook d1 first. Okay, okay. I think I just messed it up with this uh, bishop f4. Yeah, and now bishop f4. And now bishop f4. And here, after bishop b7, Um, one of the ideas, yeah, one of the ideas is, it really depends what black is going to do here. For example, here, knight h5 is possible. Okay, now I remember, now I remember. Because it's very easy to mix up. So here, black might play knight h5. I already said this knight h5 maneuver is quite annoying, quite annoying occasionally. But here, white has an interesting resource. Now go back to c1. Knight of six. And there's almost nothing there. But to take, take, knight c6, take, queen c6. Um, I don't remember. Queen c8 or rook c8, what is even better? But okay, it doesn't matter. Let's say white is playing, a black is playing queen c8. We are retreating, and the idea is aiming for a two bishop advantage, and this is quite popular. So, what is trying to play something like knight c3, e3, bishop d2, rook c1, blah 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 blah. Very slowly try to play it out, and when the time is gonna come, e4, open the position at the right time, and try to capitalize on the powerful Catalan bishop, the light square bishop on, on g2. I have a game on that as well, I'm going to show you. But what happens if black plays knight takes on e5? d takes. It is important to have the bishop on a 4. Yeah, this is why I mix it up. I just mixed it up because uh, here after bishop f4 immediately, knight h5, bishop c1, knight f6, and knight e5, black can just take, take, and have knight g4. And there is no bishop before because of g5. And this is one of the core ideas for black. So we are starting with rook d1, multi-purpose move, just to create some pressure at the d file. We are waiting for black to play b6. b6. Now, still knight e5 is not possible, takes, takes, knight g4. So we are playing bishop before. If black plays bishop b7, knight e5, um, knight h5 I already explained is going to be bishop c1, knight f6, takes, takes, and knight c6. There's nothing there. And after knight e5, d takes here. Now this can turn to be a very dangerous position for black. Because we just take and play e4. 
and yeah, in the actual game, my opponent made normal looking moves. I guess rook c8 wasn't really so good. Knight c3, bishop e4, and again, we have a symmetrical position. Seemingly not much. Black even managed to trade this light square bishop. But what white is enjoying here is the space advantage. So after queen c7 here, this is a problem. Knight b5 is a problem. Queen f3. What do you do here? I mean, knight b5, knight d6 is a problem. b4 is also going to be a problem. And in the end, black just found himself in a strategically lost position. The pawn on a7 is extremely weak. The knight on a6 is completely out of the game. And what he did, he tried to hold it, but his position was completely paralyzed. And the pawn fell anyway. That's it. So where black made a mistake. I think the entire approach of uh, allowing this to happen is quite dangerous for black to take on e5. Thematic tourney. <laughs> nah. Uh, on Sunday, Xostark, I'm going to have the next arena for my chess club on chess.com. I'm going to announce it um, both on my chess club on chess.com and Discord channel right after the adoption match. So that everybody who's gonna watch the match, they're gonna able to follow. They're gonna be able to play in the arena as well. Hey Saptavsha, how are you? GM Nations Chess Club. Just a second. I think I have a command for that. Here we go. Right. So. This is a very dangerous approach for black to take on e5 because white is just pushing e4 and enjoying quite considerable space advantage. Not good, not good. So if black would trade a couple of pieces, let's say trade bishops, okay, then queen e7, I guess he's doing more or less fine. Here, those pieces are feeling quite awkward. Um, now I'm going to show you the next game. Uh, this was the game I played against Alexander Donchenko uh, three years ago. Three years ago we were playing in the um, French League. I was playing for Team San Comento. He was playing for Vandover, I think. So this year he was playing in the Tata Steel Chess. I don't know if you were following it not or not. Um, he definitely has added to his strength. Locro Bishop F4 isn't doing much. I'm not sure I understood your question really. So I was playing with black. Bishop B4 check. Bishop e7, forcing the bishop to go there. c6, queen c2, knight e7. I'll tell you this. It's a secret. I didn't play Catalan at the time. I just sort of improvised over the board with black at the time. I had some, some knowledge that I have to give a check on b4. I'm going to retreat with the bishop on e7. b6, bishop b7, that's it. I mean, I didn't know much in this line. You don't need to be a genius to play this line with black because the setup is so solid yeah so i played b6 immediately he played rook d1 bishop b7 knight e5 now do you remember this <laughs> that's knight h5 this annoying plan knight h5 again this is worse takes takes an e4 i just showed you the game and rook c8 I guess it's just a waste of time. Rook c8, knight c3 is going to be the same idea. 
exactly the same idea although let me check what happens here knight h5 here and knight f6 ah there's e4 okay there's e4 and black is just uh not going not doing good it was a oh left replacement i didn't know that i didn't know that so after knight e5 what i did i played knight h5 he went to d2 I play knight f6, he played bishop f4, I play knight h5. <laughs> so I was like, draw? Because, I mean, I'm playing 14, and with black, it's considered to be draw is okay. That's the trim strategy. Of course, he continued, and he played c and d5. Um, here, what I want to mention is black might want to take on e5. And seemingly enjoy a good position. Because white has these double pawns on e2 and e5. But it's all about the space advantage. This is extremely risky position. Very unpleasant. Yep, e4, 9c7. And just play something like... Even, okay, bishop b4, I see. But just bishop 4 Bishop 4 here and knight c3 so those pieces they're just not feeling good what do you mean donchenko in the in the tata steel i don't know he didn't play good i guess he just wasn't ready for it i saw how he was playing against caruana with white bah yeah that was a rather strange game he, he wanted to play but just didn't work sometimes it happens so after knight of six, c takes, c takes, knight c6. Now this was this minimal advantage for white, and there's nothing better for white really. Takes, takes, queen c8, here, here, and here. Now, about this position, I'm not going to talk too much. White is enjoying this big advantage. Like this, because of the light square bishop. But normally, white is not rushing forward. He's just slowly and slowly trying to provoke some weaknesses. So, and this is what Donchenko was trying to do with me. So he was maneuvering here and there. Here and there, trading a couple of pieces, trying to grind it out to the end game. But I'm not making any big weaknesses with something like f5 or b5 or a5. And he spent a great deal of time trying to get to these weaknesses here. So not rushing forward. Slowly, carefully. Slowly, carefully. But the pawn on b6 is quite easy to hold and the weakness on b5 is not really significant. Yet it's sort of drawish, sort of. I was just waiting. I was just waiting for my opponent to push forward those pawns. Push forward. So we were here jungling here and there. Here and there. Nothing was happening. I was just trying to improve the position. Not making any committal weaknesses. And finally, he realized he needed to do something. I still didn't move any single pawn. I managed to fix the position where he offered me a draw. And of course I agree because this was a team event, but I thought I was already better. So so the lesson to be learned here in, in this kind of position, what you have to understand, that this is quite a popular setup, which can arise from several order of the moves, is with bishop f4, white is aiming for a two bishop advantage if black knows this knight h5 so knight h5 is a critical move bishop d2 bishop f4 and just go for this one because there's nothing better because again white has no time to play knight c3 because there's going to be knight e5 d takes and knight g4 so white is not in time to play c takes c takes on e4 I hope I managed to explain this idea, at least the concept, so that you better understand. Um, there is another idea, another interesting setup 
for black, it's the bishop d6. And I think it deserves some special attention. I'm going to start with my game against Nils. Nils Grandilius, we played some years ago in the Swedish league. I, okay, he, he also played in the Tata still, by the way. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, that's coincidence, actually. So, I was playing the line, this time with white. And of course, he gave me a check, bishop b4, bishop d2, and bishop d6. Now, about bishop d6, I want to mention is that this is extremely interesting line. And normally, black is thinking about some interesting ideas. For example, one of the ideas for black is to play knight e4 and f5 and go to some sort of um, um, Dutch stonewall position. And this is one of the reasons why, yeah, the stonewall. And one of the reasons why white is very quickly playing knight c3, not to allow this. I think there were other moves as well, something like short castle... Short castle. I already don't remember, to be honest. Again, I'm showing from the memory. Yeah. Another guy, another league. Yeah, okay, this was the, this time it was the Swedish league in year 2017. Oh, it's the same year, by the way. <laughs> no. Yeah, I guess it's the same year as with Donchenko. So about the bishop d6, I play bishop g2, c6, and knight c3. So there's a very tricky idea. White wants to play b3 and push e4 very quickly. So, for example, knight bd7, b3. And let's say black doesn't know this. And he plays... Just a second. And he plays... I'm going to find you another game. Then we are going to come, come back to this one. And he plays just a second. Short castle. Seemingly, uh, yeah, the, so that the pawn doesn't hang. Yeah, by the way, another reason. Another reason why the bishop is standing on, on um, d6. Is that, for example, I would play here short castle. D takes is a traditional idea with the bishop on e7, I have e4. But here, black normally has e5. And that's another reason why the bishop is standing on d6, to allow to push forward the e-pawn. And something like d takes, knight e5, black is just doing more than fine. More than fine. The Morozzi bind? Um, I don't think so. It doesn't look like Morozzi bind. You mean the pawns on uh, c6 and e6? I don't know, I didn't think about this. So I just want to show you the idea after bishop g2. Knight e7, black already is thinking about d takes on c4 and e5. This is my game with black this time, also in 2017. And at the time I played short castle. Short castle and b6 so i just mixed up i just mixed up everything absolutely that is possible to mix it there because i, I mean what's the difference i'm going to play b6 bishop b7 it's going to be the same and suddenly my opponent played e4 knight e4 and knight g5 and at this moment i started to realize oh so that's the difference why the bishop is supposed to be standing on e7, not on d6. It allows white to play knight g5. So seemingly it doesn't look much. After knight f6, takes, takes. Yeah, the pawn on h7 is under attack. I need to protect. And this... 
This is an ugly position. I was playing against Tommy Nubek. He is, um, at least he was, I mean, I don't know, maybe not right now. He used to be the leading Finnish Grandmaster. This time we played in the Finnish league. <laughs> so all of these games are coming for some kind of leagues in uh, 2017. And yeah, I was forced to go to E7 and he just completely annihilated me because I realized that bishop f4, bishop e5, with such a weakness on c6, this is a terrible position. So this game I played in February of 2017. Oh yeah, the pawn on c6 is feeling awful, awful. So I never played again. I never played again the b6. This is just a bad setup. I tried to use a classical idea from another Catalan variation. It just looked ugly. I was just dead lost after the opening. So now I'm going to show you the game I played against Nils. And Nils Grandelius. And this was in the um, same year. 2017. And in October. And I noticed that... Grandilius is playing exactly the same line. I want, wanted my revenge on the line. And this time I wanted to check how it feels from the white's perspective. So I played bishop d6 here, c6 here, and again b3. And now, Nils showed a very good understanding of the position. He took on c4, played e5. E takes, E takes, and Queen E7 check. Now, this is the major difference. This Queen E7 check. White has not managed to castle. And after Knight E2, Knight E4, Knight E2, short castle, Knight C3, Knight F6. Black just got an excellent position out of the opening. So... I wasn't really in the mood, I guess. I don't remember the circumstances back then. I just traded everything. <laughs> Played knight e4, bishop f5, boom, 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 draw greed. Yeah, sometimes GM games can be so boring. I wanted to test a single line. It didn't really work. My opponent picked up the best continuation. So I just, okay, whatever. Okay, let's just, let's just make a draw. This is a team event. Every single result for every board is very important. So I made a draw. Now, after some time, I managed to test this line a little further. And this time it was against Pavel Elyanov. The same year, by the way. Yeah, that was interesting. Uh, year 2017 apparently was the year of the Catalan. So, my opponent was Pavel Elyanov. Another opponent, another league. This time it was the German league. Bishop d6. About the bishop d6, I think Team Wambala was happy that I lost to Tommy. No, I don't think I don't I don't think they were happy. <laughs> yeah. But um Bishop d6 among uh, good players is considered to be a very aggressive approach. So bishop e7 is like, okay, I mean I just want to play some solid chess here. Um uh, normally uh people don't play the Catalan. To play for a big fight with black, it's just for equality. But bishop d6 is slightly more aggressive. I see stun. I'm gonna talk about those tricky other moves. Yeah, I know about knight f3. We are gonna talk about this. No, 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 no. The draw with Nils was in the Swedish league. I lost to Tommy in the uh, <laughs> Finnish league, and this is in the German league against Pavel Elyanov. So, again, I repeated the same line. I think I found some improvements. So, Elianov played the same line with e5, e3. Takes, takes. Queen e7, knight e2. And this time, he didn't go for knight e4. And he played the short castle. And very quickly, I uh, got in the worst position. Norwegian and Danish leagues. Uh, I don't think I'm any games from them. I've, I've played in Norwegian before, and I am up about to play in the Danish. <laughs> I hope I, I answered your question. 
So short castle here. Awad is just enjoying a better position. I don't know why really uh, Ilyanov went for this line. So Awad is just enjoying a very good center. Black is struggling behind the development and I was pressuring him for some time. With a very active play. Black never got out of the opening but the game ended in a draw. Right. So that's essentially my limited experience with bishop d6. Um, let me go back again, explain some ideas. Um, this is considered to be the best order of the moves for white. This I remember. Because uh, b3 here is not so good. Black just... Ah, just a second. Was there, was there c5 though? But okay, I mean, black can just play knight e4, knight c3, and five. And immediately go for a good version of the stonewall dutch. And in the dutch stonewall, white is normally charging forward b4, b5, c4, c5. As quickly as possible, try to create uh, some targets. Here, b3 is sort of loss of time. So that's the reason why b3 is not really accurate, but I think there is also some c5 move here. Maybe I, maybe I mix it up, mixing it up, and after knight c3, it's very accurate to play b3 first, because prepare to play this e4 next, not to allow for black to take the pawn on c4 and then push e5 further. So short castle is already a slight mistake. Castle, castle, b6, and now the strongest is without queen c2, push immediately e4. So knight e4. Takes, takes, knight g5, because the bishop is not standing here. f5 is impossible because of fork. And after knight f6, takes, takes, takes. This is going to be essentially the same game I had against Tommy Nubik. It's a terrible position. Don't wish it to anyone. I had to test it once, never want to test it again. Right. Um... Before I switch, before I switch to the um, uh, to those tricky side lines, let me check. Did you send me some games on Discord? Is there somebody who wants me to analyze his games on the Catalan? Just a second, I'll check it. Um, bug boy, are you here? Because if the if the player is not here, I'm not gonna talk about the game. Okay, I guess he's not here. Maybe he's gonna be later. Yeah, so again, I remind there's this opportunity if you want, if you had a game in the Catalan or some similar structure that you want an advice, I can have a look at it. Uh, why GM agreed to draw? Ah, you're referring to my game against Grandilius. Yes, uh, this was this game. Um, so just a second. So takes, takes, e5, e3, takes, takes, check here, knight e4 here. Showing for the memory, okay. I think it was like here, here, here. Uh, the reason why we agreed to draw is there's just not enough pieces on the board. And it's an obstacle bishop position. So we could play a couple of more moves. For example, black could have played rook e8 here, king f8, rook e1, trade, trade, rook e8, takes, takes, I don't know, something like d5, takes, takes, but, but what's the point? What's the point? I mean, at some moment, um, normally players realize where the game is going to be heading. So if you see there's going to be a draw something like after 20, 30 moves, unless the rules... Uh, clearly dictate that you need to make those minimum amount of moves you just agree to draw because that that's how it works all right i guess bug boy is not here 
so all right now i'm going to talk about those tricky order the moves so there already was a question in the chat why not start with knight f3 and that is a very good question very good question so knight f3 and it really works against people who don't know how to improvise so for example i'm i'm preparing against uh, somebody who is always playing e6 d5 knight f6 bishop e7 and blah 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 so i start with knight f3 but i check what he is gonna do after knight f3 as well if i have access to his games prior to the game so let's say he plays d5 g3 knight f6 bishop g2 e6 short castle and bishop e7 so far so good now the next move is next two moves are going to be quite critical white needs to make move so we start with d4 here black has also access to b5 this wasn't possible before this is quite an interesting resource for black to position the bishop on b7 early so something like b3 is just just too slow it's just too slow b3 let's say um i don't know i guess bishop b7 c4 boom 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 and c5 is incoming how is this an achievement for white because black managed to put the bishop on b7 this is one of those catalan ideas that black always tries to achieve so after d4 if black would be oblivious to the idea now we have tricked him completely because he didn't give a check on b4 he already has the bishop on e7 our bishop is not standing on d2 and it stands better on c1 and again i already show you this line i'll after c6 uh what was it again queen c2 97 um i think it was either knight b2 knight b2 by the way i think it was possible but knight c3 b6 and was it oh my goodness i already forgot b3 b6 knight c3 and knight d2 so this was one of the okay i already mixed up <laughs> you need to include rook d1 again showing from the memory but this was the point this d2 square for the knight to accelerate the push of the e pawn makes the difference actually i had once a game um uh, just a second i can show you two tricky games how to trick your opponent g3 just play g3 so that was the, that was at the time when i was playing also um c4 first move and about c4 first move c4 e5 g3 is a very interesting line very much playable avoiding to play knight c3 so i played g3 with the idea that if my opponent is going to play e5 i'm going to play c4 if he's going to play d5 which happened in the game i switch to the ready he doesn't play ready i mean at the time he did not after knight f6 he played something solid now from the ready we switch uh, just a second to the catalan and at the time he didn't really know properly how to respond so we switch to c4 queen c2 and this line and i imagine against such an opponent who has been tricked by the order of the moves and he plays d takes on c4 i think hey pass pawn how are you it's quite a quite a fine idea to test against such a guy 95 
Because you already expect he is not going to know this. You have tricked him with the order the moves. If you know what he is normally playing, there's a very limited chance that he is going to know the main lines after knight e5, how properly to respond. So he might know knight, knight c6. Yeah, sure, well done. But do you think he remembers these lines after knight a3? I think so. He's not studied it. So it's all about... All about order and moves, tricky order and moves, how you can fool your opponent into unfamiliar territory. And this happens all the time. It happens all the time. So um, I think actually the best move taking into account my opponent's opening theory at the time after g3 was to play c5. Because this reaches to close the ceiling if I would play e4 and... I don't play myself the English opening with g3 and c4. <laughs> so it's quite tricky, tricky move. But again, this worked for one game. That's it. That's all I need. So that's exactly the same was in the in the example of Shakriar Mamedyarov against Wesley. So he used this idea for just one game. That's it. That's it. He already knows that his opponent is going to be ready. He is going to be study this line and he'll just try something else. And that's extremely popular, this one game approach at the highest level. So let's say they're playing the normal openings, the normal lines, but to, in order to beat a very good player, you need to have a surprise. So you're playing out a line for just one game. So if he knows it perfectly, there's a forced draw. If he does not, then it's not so easy. London system against G3. What do you mean, d5? I'm not sure there's... I, I can still play the ready, by the way. g3, d5. Uh, that's not London. I don't know what's that. It's some some ready. I already did a bootcamp about that. London reversed. Yeah, it's a ready. I talked about those. Uh, okay. I talked about those setups in one of my previous boot camps uh, of the Reti. I was toying with some ideas there. So another tricky game I'm going to show you. And with this, I'll start another tricky order with the moves is this game. It's not nowhere in the database, by the way. I was playing this game five years ago. Five years ago, and my opponent was now Estonian Grandmaster, Otomar Latva. We were playing in a round-robin tournament for our Grandmaster Norm. I was the invited Grandmaster so that other can other players can fight for the Grandmaster title. And he was, I think, one of the challengers, yeah, one of the international masters. So I played C4. And C4, again, is extremely interesting a way how you can try to trick your opponents out of Catalan or around it. I'm going to show you. Um, so c4, he played e6. So you might think, okay, where's the difference? So let's say, let's let's try to do this with knight of 3. Knight of 3, d5, and g3. My idea is to avoid playing d4. <laughs> Do I have the pleasure in preventing GM norms from being achieved? Nah, it's just a part of the job description, so to speak. It's a very normal thing. Um, organizers sometimes, they're organizing these special tournaments with the Grandmaster norm. So, for example, in order to uh, reach this, uh, you need to have at least three Grandmasters and certain countries, um, so that international tournament, certain average rating. Why this is so important? Because let's say I'm an international master, feed the master, whatever. With a high rating, I need my grandmaster norm. I already know before this tournament, if I'm going to get, let's say, six and a half or seven points out of nine, the norm is mine. So organizers are making sure that every participant can fight for the Grandmaster Norm. And it's extremely popular format. Um, ten rounds. Uh, I'm sorry, nine rounds. 
10 participants, they're playing a round robin, 3 invited grandmasters, couple of international masters, maybe some other FIDE masters, and they're fighting for the norm. Uh, the same is also for the international master norm tournaments and the question is do i enjoy crushing some spirits yeah sure i do <laughs> i mean i just enjoy the time there uh, i know some uh grandmasters just uh, just make a lot of draws but i mean since since i'm playing in a tournament i guess it makes sense to go for a fight a final gm norm uh listen woody i think yeah, it's the most important, but the most difficult one, I think everybody will agree, is the first one. The most difficult norm is the first one. Because prior to the first norm, you're just you're just not sure if you can do this. And once you get the first, you know, okay, I can do this. I can play at this level, so it's only a matter of time. But if you're playing for uh, months and months, and maybe sometimes years, and the norm is not just getting there, so you're asking the question, can I even do this? Yeah. You mean Hans Niemann? With the first norm or the final norm? A final norm normally is easy. Maybe it's uh, another psychological thing. I don't think there's any time frame now, Marco. It used to be something like 10 years? I don't know. For me, it was two years. Two years for me. I was playing something like seven tournaments in seven tournaments or eight tournaments i got three gm norms yeah so something like and once you're ready to play at that level you're just getting it so again this is what i want to advise for everybody just don't focus too much on the rating if you're gonna play at the level you're gonna get to them you just need to start to play at that level the rating is gonna rise the norms are gonna come if you're not playing then it's very difficult to get it Super GM is um, a slang. It's a slang in popular language. Uh, some people want to um, uh, make the elite more special than the normal grandmasters because when the title of grandmaster was involved, uh, not involved but um, uh, first uh, established, there are so few grandmasters in the world. Now in the world, there are something like over 1,000 grandmasters. I mean, the level has increased dramatically. And there have been talks that you need to create another title for the, for the best in the world. So that's why there is a talk. Super GM. Super GM. But, I mean, this is just, uh, just talk. I don't think it ever will happen. It will immediately... I guess make feel all other 1000 grammars less less important <laughs> i guess so it's like it, it would be the same like there's a black belt in karate and suddenly you'll you'll invent uh, diamond belt in karate just because there's so many black belts so what so what yeah you just invent another another belt and now everybody else is gonna feel not so significant a dan yeah, dance are interesting, actually. Maybe something like that could be done in chess as well. Something like, I have a GM title and 10 dance. <laughs> what about that? Yeah, that would be interesting. Patser Master. I like that. <laughs> no, but actually about the dance, that's, that's, that's interesting, definitely. I mean, we could talk about this definitely for a long time. I mean, potential ideas which could be implemented. For example, I've mentioned before that it would be extremely interesting that the rating system would change as well. For example, we could adopt something from tennis. In tennis, they have these uh, ratings, the overall standings, the ATP standings of, I don't know, how many years... So you need to defend those points the next year. And then there's also the yearly rating. And this is, I think, which would be extremely interesting for chess. So, for example, let's say I have a very high rating. Like now, in the COVID, I have a very high rating. I'm not playing anywhere. So I'm keeping my rating. I just play a couple of games a year and I'm keeping my rating. But the point is, to have this yearly rating is that it forces people to participate. Otherwise, you're just going to be very low. So I think this would be extremely interesting to implement, but 
I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon. It happened to Djokovic, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure it's even possible to implement in chess, but uh, it at least it would force a lot of people to play more, I guess. All right. About this setup, um, about G3. Black should already immediately take on C4. And now there's this idea with queen a4 check, knight e7, queen takes on c4. Do you remember this principle in the Catalan? If black gets the bishop on b7, he's doing great. So he can already play a6, bishop g2, b5, queen, whatever, and bishop b7. So this is how black has tricked white. So that's the reason why after c4 e6, white plays g3 first. Very tricky. So the point is after d5, bishop g2, black cannot really take on c4. I mean, he can, but it's going to be not so easy. After knight d7, queen c4, a6, now this is not a threat. So I could... Play something like queen c2, play knight c3, maybe d3, and then at some point knight f3. And he is going to be struggling to play b5 and bishop b7. Uh, I prefer to retake the c4 pawn with a queen. I haven't really tried knight a3. Super duper. Yeah, maybe it's up like 100 years. We are going to have 100 or 200 super GMs and they're, they're going to make another tire. Super pooper GM. <laughs> oh, come on. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think they're going to change the um, change the titles and add one more. But I'm not the one to decide, am I? Yeah. All right, so so here the point was after g3, e6, d5, bishop g2. My opponent played knight f6, knight f3. And the biggest drawback of this setup is black has access to d4. If black knows this, black plays this. So d4 is by far the best move here. I think so, at least. And now the idea is revealed after short castle, c5, e3, knight c6, e takes, c takes, d3. Oh, we are playing some modern Benoni. Colors reversed. So this is extremely interesting line. Black is doing fine. Totally fine. Yeah. But this is the best. Otherwise, otherwise, white is completely fooling him with the order of the moves. So he starts with c6, c4, includes g3, bishop g2. He is ready for the early capture. Take with the queen, stopping a6, b5. Only after knight of three, include knight of six, include knight of three. Now, bishop e7, castle, castle d4 <laughs> where's the bishop b4 intermezzo check <laughs> completely fooled so this was my game and um, my opponent decided that he should have played for the close position where it's much more difficult to trick an unprepared player he played d takes on c4 and now hey Dritman, appreciate that for the sub thank you and now after knight e5, I decided that this is the moment when you could test your opponent's preparation. Because I started with c6, I tricked him the classical Catalan, I was sure he doesn't know this line. So again, this is a perfect moment when to test a rare line. And he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready, he played knight c6, I went for this line instead. 
I knew it to be drawish, but I mean black is making a draw, not white. And he played another continuation e5 instead of the c5, and I won a nice game. I'm not gonna show you until the end. Somehow I I managed to to go to a very nice end game. Oh, what is that? Hey, Birdsmith! Welcome again. Appreciate that. Four months. Yeah, that's incredible. Four months already. About the um, about the uh, sub bow, I I don't think I've made an announcement yet. We will have a next sub bow, and it's going to be what's the date? Just a second. Nineteenth. 19 February. So maybe next week I'll organize something. I I'm not sure yet, but 19 February I'll have a sub battle against Angelika Volkova. So we already agreed. Uh, Friday, starting at uh, 5 p.m. Central European time, should be fun. I'll post the details on Discord. I just didn't get around it, but rest assured, there's gonna be a sub battle. There's gonna be. There's gonna be more of them. Um, yeah, at the moment I'm slightly focused on other things. Uh, most notably, uh, this Sunday I will have the adoption match. And uh, yeah, I just don't know what I'm gonna do next week. Yeah, I was I was thinking do another sub battle with just Dojo, but and they agreed, but I just figured out there's a 10 hour difference. 10 hour difference. Oh my goodness, they're Pacific time. <laughs> uh, so that would be awful for all the subs. Yeah, yeah, Angelica. Yeah, that's her. Just born. So 19, 19 February, starting 5 p.m. Central European time. It's going to be there. So you can already mark in your calendars. And all of the subs are, are going to be invited. Yep. <laughs> Ten more 10 minute games. Um. Yeah, but Bertsman, that's difficult for the sub sub bal, isn't it? That's quite difficult because um, we already, uh, when we are doing this uh, sub bal with Dina, I think we we found a good compromise three plus two, so that people can uh, think slightly more. I guess if we will have less boards, we are not gonna have fifteen totally because it was quite difficult to gather the necessary amount. I uh, I guess we could do three plus two or maybe slightly longer, maybe three plus three, but uh, to give you a little more time to think. But ten minutes, uh, then we can have only something like five players, <laughs> five boards. That that's gonna be quite quite little. I mean, most of the sub battles include uh, three plus zero anyway, so we are the ones organizing three plus two so that you can think. Right. Okay, okay, yeah. But listen about the uh, rapid tournaments. This is something I want to organize on my chess club official tournaments. Again, I already slightly explained the idea why I'm not doing this right now. Is that I just just cannot find the time to do all of this. Because if I'm organizing a tournament on my club at chess.com, I want to be present. So I could easily run a tournament. Would you be happy about it? I don't know. I could do this, of course. I could organize every day, every week, various kinds of tournaments. I could organize a rapid tournament, or I could organize a blitz tournament. I could organize bullet tournament. But the problem is, I cannot be there. So this is this is the little thing which, at the moment, is still pushing me away, and I just don't want to do. It. I want to be present. I want to stream the event, and that's the reason why I'm not doing this right now, at the moment. But this Sunday, there's going to be the next arena. Yeah, it's long overdue. Hey, hey, Irv. Yeah, still here. Still here trying to explain. Okay, so I guess it is important that I'm there and streaming the event, right? I mean, otherwise, it's just, just another tournament. There's many of them. I'll think about this. Maybe, maybe I could run them without me, but announce the prizes. So there's at least that. I had none in January. I mean, that's completely unforgivable. So I, I, I should be, should, should fix this. <coughs> right. All righty.
All right. Um, yeah, about the um, tricky order of the moves. Let me check if there's um, if there's something that I missed. So, c4 again. Every single move will have a drawback. Every single move. So, I would I would suggest if you're considering to play this, and let's assume you know what your opponent is gonna play, is you check his games because c4 there's e5. <laughs> And this is completely something else. And if you don't play this, you can trick your opponent like this. I play this. So I can I can experiment with this because if it's an English opening, Sicilian reversed, okay. Fine. No problem. The same applies for knight of three. So knight of three, the position could easily switch to some kind of uh, c5. And you will not get your typical Catalan. So if you don't play, for example, the open Sicilian, or you don't play the English opening with c4, not really a great idea. So I guess this is for the versatile players who can easily play various kinds of openings and then try to use their knowledge to trick the opponent. Um... Yeah, that is interesting, Bertsman. Just a second about your idea. That is interesting. So d4, d5, knight f3, knight f6, g3. I'm pretty sure I already mentioned there's this move b5. So let's say e6, bishop g2, and b5. There's always something. There's always something that is messing up with your plans. Always some little drawback. Yeah, so b5 and... This is uh, just a second. Let me ask chess.com. This is Queen's Pawn opening. Pseudo Catalan variation. <laughs> I didn't know this. This is what chess.com tells me. Queen's Pawn opening. Now I know it. Yeah, yeah. A4 and something like B4 and what was the line here again? C4 was it? C4, B takes, Knight C3. I mean, maybe this is okay. I mean, structure-wise, I don't like it. Because the white pawn is on a4, there's a big glaring weakness on b4. But if you like it, I mean, okay. Um, ah, about, yeah, Flash of Steel, about the, what you're saying there. d4, knight of 6, c4, e6, g3. This is against people who exclusively exclusively are playing the Queen's Indian. The Queen's Indian with b6, bishop b7, because here it's impossible. Yeah, so this g3 move is a trick, is a trick against somebody who is not flexible enough. He just plays one opening. So I'll always find a way how to trick him into something unpleasant. And now let's say I'm forcing uh, my opponent to play d5, and there you go. Let's play the Catalan and smile. <laughs> Getting good in one opening is okay, but you should be, if you're talking about um, Earth, a really good level, you should pay attention to those tricky order moves. About tricky order moves, for example, I can show you um, the whole point of pressure d5? No, no, no. The whole point of playing early g3 is stop b6 from happening. I could show you some tricky order of the moves. Why it's so important uh, to properly set up your opening when you are playing out the opening. Let me let me show you something. For example, I think I already did this by the way in the in one of the boot camps. But okay, I mean maybe maybe I did not. I don't remember. So, for example, let's say we are playing the Nimzo. And in the Nimzo, um, now, let's say we're playing the, um, yeah, the Nimzo. c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, and after e3, I play d5, knight f3, and c5. Yeah, because this is the top choice, the top choice in the um, chess base. Or... Whatever, the book I've read and the author says, you have to play this. This is such a good line. So, okay, okay, this is a good line. This is the Nimzo. It's a good line. Nobody's arguing. 
But let's say I'm also playing the Queen's Indian because it's a very similar setup. So I'll start with e6, knight f3, b6. And now I switch to Nimzo. So you, I guess you have to play bishop b4 because you're playing it normally. And now just a second. Why I'm playing two setups against the same system? <laughs> This is a wrong. This is just an example of how um, it's a wrongly set up opening preparation. It should be already d5, c5 without bishop b7. And, and these kinds of examples, there are many. What if black plays bishop b4 check? Flash of steel. Which, which line are you talking about? Nimzo Indian? Depends. Do you like blue cheese? Somebody, somebody do. Some like, some don't. It depends on the taste. I mean, is Catalan good? It depends on the taste. I mean, <laughs> somebody says E4 has to be played. Somebody says D4 has to be played. Some people like English. Some like Retty. I, I don't think there is such an easy answer to that. Ah... You mean immediately bishop b4. It is possible. A g3, bishop b4 check. And I guess bishop d2. I know people play like this. And there's still bishop e7 here. But it's slightly weird to be honest. Bishop g2 and d5. You've played... London your entire chess career. Well, Irv, you're missing things. Missing out things. A lot of things. London is okay. But there's so many things. You know, sometimes I'm catching myself to this thought. What if I've played my entire career and I haven't played my opening yet? Because I'm playing something which I'm used to, I know this. But maybe there's still something, an opening out there, which is just for me. It feels exactly for me. And I've been playing another system for years just because I know it. Experimenting is a big, important moment. Don't be afraid to experiment. And a lot of players are experimenting, changing the repertoire, just changing and testing and seeing and how it feels. So, for example, for somebody, uh, Catalan is the dream opening. Somebody hates it. He just don't understand it. Somebody plays uh, King's Indian. Somebody hates King's Indian and, and believes that you should be playing a semislav. Somebody believes that there should be Queen's Indian. But the point is, you can always experiment and try to experiment with a lot of things. So, for example, I've never played King's Indian in my life. But... I would love to. I would love to check it. Just just at least once. Just how it feels. Because it's entirely different chess. And uh, I think a good player wants to evolve. Always. He wants to change. He wants to add something. For example, just take an example. Magnus Carlsen. Right. Did you notice that he started to play much more aggressive? He started to play, take more risks? Because I think he wants to evolve as a player. He wants to be versatile. He wants to be aggressive uh, super GM. He wants to be positional super GM. He already is a super GM in end games. He wants to be super GM in very sharp games to be a complete perfection in chess, if that is even possible. So I think that should be something that uh, everybody is aiming for, to understand the game better. Yeah, King's Indian with black. Yeah, Grandfeld I've never played as well. Magnus never beat you. Well, lucky you. Did you play against Magnus? <laughs> yeah. But um, 
Rajabov right now. Yeah, he is the only King's Indian player. About the Catalan. Like I mentioned, I don't think it's so popular right now. Uh, Vladimir Kramnik used to be one of the world's biggest experts in the Catalan. If you want to check, I suggest check Big Vlad's games. Uh, among the authors, I know that uh, if you're interested uh, for more reading material, Mikhail Marin has uh, written some books or databases about the Catalan. Uh, for example, by the way, I checked Chessable. There's no courses for Catalan, none. I mean, not big ones, at least. That was a little surprise. I guess somebody is working on it. Yeah, and Karana tried the King Zina because this is, ex again, the reason that players want to evolve. They want to check new ideas. They want to be have better understanding. Like a great artist improvise between these many openings. I think playing just a single opening for the entire life... Uh, it's not a good idea. Definitely not a good idea. You're missing out a lot of fun. Is there Kramnik, an opening where Kramnik is not an expert? I could find. Maybe Latvian Gambit? <laughs> Pretty sure he doesn't know much there. I mean, he probably knows how to collect a poem, but that's it. I don't think he's bothered even to study it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... I don't know it much either. Just I'm just not just take the pawn and just why bother? <laughs> Avoiding the Catalan. Uh, yeah, the Catalan is super super solid. Bon Cloud. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Kramnik doesn't know much there as well in the Bon Cloud. About the Bon Cloud, I was thinking actually. It, it would be fun to organize these um, thematic uh, thematic arenas on the club. Because right now chess.com allows to organize these thematic arenas. So there is a possibility to upload the fan and force everybody to play the bone cloud. <laughs> and stream this. <laughs> I would love to test, uh, check this and stream this. Um... Thematic sub uh, that's nice. Yeah. About the Catalan, I'm playing it occasionally myself. But you know, it's it's always um it 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 takes a full circle, at least for me. I don't know, maybe for somebody else it's differently. So when I started to play chess, arenas are on boot camps. That's an idea. This is definitely, oh, I like this, soundly. This is a great idea. Yeah, unfortunately, right now, I'm slightly unprepared. Um, would you be interested if I, I, I just don't know how to set it up. I don't think I'm ready for this. But for the future, this would be, this would be interesting. Right after the, um, right after the, Bootcamp, if it involves a theoretical opening, we would have a thematic arena. I love the idea. That's definitely... I'll think about this. Yeah. Um, I've played Catalan. Yeah, what I wanted to tell there. I've played Catalan for quite a lot of time, but uh, the point is, for me, I've made a full circle. I started to play E4. I started to play E4 first because... Why is that? Because my coach told me. He said, Arthurs, play e4. So I did. I did not nothing else. And after some time, I was having my own thoughts. Okay, e4, I have to change something. I don't really like those positions. So I just started to experiment. I just started to play knight of 3 Diretti. <laughs> yeah, North Korea, that's exactly. That's that's what's going to come. So I started to play knight of 3 Diretti. It was fun. Then I decided to experiment to play c4. c4 and knight f3. Knight f3, c4. c4, knight f3. Then I added d4. And I was just mixing here and there. c4, d4, knight f3, knight f3, c4, d4, knight f3. Completely forgot about e4. Then I got fed up of the ready. I go back to d4 with new ideas. And it's always like this. It's always like this. A full circle. 
So you're playing e4, c4, knight f3, sometimes d3 and uh, b3 and blitz just to get new positions. Otherwise, imagine where's the joy? We are playing the same game as uh, the same line for years. Imagine yourself, you're getting, I mean, I would just shoot myself if I have to play the whole life to Catalan. <laughs> Where's the fun in that? So imagine I'm every single game I'm playing the cattle. There's a cattle, another cattle, another cattle. And just blah. I mean, how many times you can play that? So I just want to test something else. So if I'm fed up of close positions, just go e4 for different uh, feeling, different position. If you're feeling slightly artist, play c4, knight c3, and go for slightly different positions because you're just sometimes fed up. It was a rising position. You just want to try something else. So I just don't understand why some people just play the same thing for years. I mean, just, why? <laughs> I mean, not only Catalan, there's many people who are playing the same line for years. I mean, they're just not changing it. I could name you a couple of people that I won't. <laughs> One hundred and eight hours? Wow. I think I saw it. I mean, Wesley did a chessable course on E4, and Sam Shanklin did in three parts the D4. Yeah, I think so. MVL. Yeah, but MVL is a unique exception. Somehow the rules doesn't don't apply to him. <laughs> what can I what can I tell you? I mean, he plays the Grunfeld, he plays the Silla Knight of. But you are seeing how he is struggling, right? In the night of, especially at the top level, it's so dangerous. Why is he doing this? I don't understand, but I guess he knows what he's doing. 108 hours. Poor Wesley. 108 hours. How many days did it took him to record? Unbelievable. Saving the best line for the candidates? It is possible. Yeah, that 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 is possible. I believe, but maybe he's saving the best lines in the Sicilian Knight of and the Grunfeld. <laughs> Not something else. I highly doubt it. You know why why is that? Because you need to have an experience. And that that is one thing which you can never prepare. You need to have a feeling. For example, I'm playing the cattle in my whole life. <laughs> I've played it for 20 years, whatever. And now I suddenly decide to play E4. I secretly prepare E4. I've studied the chessable course by Wesley So. I've invented so much time. I study everything and blah, 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 blah. And then I come to the tournament. But there is one little thing which studying cannot bring into your, into your head is the feeling of the position. You know it, but you just don't feel it. And it comes with time. You have to practice. You have to practice. And you're just going to be thinking like an elephant every single time because you sort of know, know all of this, but still you want to understand all of the nuances. I know this from personal experience. I did exactly the same. For example, I was playing the Sicilian Taimanov with Black. Uh, before it was Sicilian Khan, then it was Sicilian Taimanov. And then I switched to E45 and I had a good knowledge. And I was losing pretty much every single game at the start. Every single game. Because I was getting good positions, but I just couldn't feel them. I just couldn't understand them. I mean, it's a completely different dynamic. So it took me quite some time. So, for example, if you're saying that MVL is saving the best for the candidates, it may be. But I'm not so sure if it's a different opening. You need to feel it. Otherwise, it's a risky strategy. Unless, of course, he has a lot of sparring games at home. It is also possible. No, not memory. Feeling. Feeling. Which comes with the practice. Four and a half days straight. Yeah, pretty sure he didn't do that. Oh, by the way, do you check uh, Giri's uh, Nidorf? Apparently he had released this chessable course. Complete Nidorf or whatever it was titled. Is it good? Has somebody checked it? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm pretty sure he didn't include everything he knows. 
Otherwise, that's that's nonsense. I mean, they don't spill every single detail, obviously. They keep something to themselves. <laughs> All the drawing lines. Yeah, I know I heard this joke that supposedly Nils had followed Anisha's uh, chessable course. I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe that's just a rumor. Or he said it himself? I don't know. The course was re released something like December. Yeah. Ah, he said it. <laughs> really? Very good GMs are studying the courses as well? I thought always that very good grandmasters, they're doing the study themselves. Although I would have to say, if I wanted to study, if I wanted to study something from scratch, uh, let's say I would be considering to start with D4, I would absolutely consider to buy uh, Shanklin's course. I would consider this. I'm not saying I would because, I mean, normally I, I would just prefer to study myself, but if somebody has prepared everything, I mean, it's probably a crime not to check it, right? Uh, Nils was invited uh, as a late replacement as well. I didn't know that. Then it was apparently Donchenko as a late replacement and Nils as well. Really? That's interesting. Right. All right. So what do I do now? I want to play some Blitz. I want to play some Blitz. What do you think? Can I play some Blitz? Maybe Catalan. <laughs> that would be fun. I'll try. So he said it. Maybe that was a deliberate joke. All right. Let me check who is here. Oh, just a second. I think I need to adjust the board. Yeah, Blitz team, I'll try to play some Catalan. I cannot really promise. I'm not such a big D4 player myself. But as a chess professional, I'm supposed to know everything, more or less. That's the life of a chess professional. You cannot just know one line, especially as a chess coach. You have to know something from everything. Uh, okay, I think I'll remove the header. Sorry. Here we go. <laughs> Catalan all day. Yeah, by, guys, but did you send these games on Discord or not? I checked there was Bug Boy the only game. Nobody plays the Catalan? I want to check it. Maybe the requirement of having played the Catalan was too much, right? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, here we go. Let's try the Catalan. Come on, buddy. Yes, 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 yes. Here we go. Here we go. The Catalan. <laughs> All right. Now I have to show what I just taught you. Bishop d7, can you play that? I don't know this move. I think with a6, a4, it is bishop d7 here. It doesn't look familiar. Uh, just a second, what is this? e3, knight a5, knight d2. I'm not sure. Okay, but there. Knight a5, of course, uh, 
I don't know. I mean, I didn't understand what's the difference between including A6 and A4. I recognize the idea, but uh, maybe it's the same. Maybe there's no difference. Ah, oh, whatever. And he plays it. So rook c8, b4. Yeah, maybe it's not much. A takes makes no sense. Okay, I guess my experiment failed a little. He's just doing very solid. Knight e5. That's a strange move, to be honest. What if rook d1? Ah, there's queen f6. Now, this is slightly unpleasant for black. This is an isolated pawn. I mean, it's not much. He cannot play d4. I see that. There's going to be a check on c7. Now rook c8 drops a pawn on d5, he cannot do that. I'm slightly slow, I guess, but... Um... Yeah, I guess it's going to be difficult to win this. That's strange. Now I want to play king d4. Yeah, but I'm concerned about those seconds. I think he is in some trouble here, but again, my time management could cause me some problems so king d4 is the big threat maybe he even will have to drop a pawn so which is what he did maybe it's not so bad Now he drops another pawn. Ah, slightly slow here.
This is completely winning. It was at least. Where's my pre-move? Unbelievable. Pfft. Wow, that, that's weird. Just a second, I think I... Where's my pre-move? Enable pre-moves. Lack correction. Oh, okay, I, I thought I was pretty quick, I mean, with those pre-moves, but pfft, confidently lost it. He had a lag. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, whatever. But I think all in all, that was an interesting moment, just a second. He played... So, bishop d7, I don't know this move, to be honest. Um, I I remember this, I showed this with a6, a4 included, and then bishop d7, and then knight e5 was just equal. Here, I just don't know. So, I improvised with knight e5. And... Uh, yeah, I guess this is just a draw. I mean, but he misplayed it. He should have. I think knight e5 was not an accurate move. Give it there. Let me try to play something else. Catalan? Oh! <laughs> Bummer. It's not going to be a Catalan anymore. Bummer. How do I reach the Catalan? Okay, he's not in the mood for it anyway. <laughs> I guess d5 is after the question. That was a mouse slip. Okay, then this game is not so much fun. Yep. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> I want to play Catalans. <laughs> I just did a bootcamp about um, Catalan. <laughs> the audience is watching some Catalans. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this should be for. Did we check this? And C5. Okay, that's not really a Catalan, but okay, it will have to do. I'll try to make it work. Um, yeah, that was a nice gesture from the opponent. So black is sort of, sort of worse in these types of positions, but it's not much. I could play d5, e takes, and knight h4. Maybe it's not so good. Okay, but there, let's try to play something simple. <laughs> Your entire chess games are mouse slips. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the best scenario of black is going to push d5 and equalize. So for the Hedgecock setup, typically black needs the dark square bishop on e7. Maybe I should have played knight e5 first. I don't know. Not, not not really clear. B4 is not so good, is it? Is it? I guess it's not. Okay, let's just let's just test the opponent. Uh, what happens after knight b5? Um. Knight b5 is asking some um, direct questions. So knight e6 is a big problem. Um, yeah, d5 is a good move.
But again, I mean, Black manages to take on C4. White has typically very good knights, causing some problems, but maybe it's not much. Check to the queen. Uh, let's try to trade it because then it weakens the c6 square. I think queen a6 was not a good move. Now this knight on d6, potentially knight on c6 is going to cause some headaches for black. Now the question is with what to take? I guess with the rook so that I can play rook d4. So there's no pin on the rook, on the knight. Again, the only thing which slightly concerns me is my time management, but... <laughs> After the opening, 1 minute and 17, I guess it's not much. So I want to play something like b4, get rid of this knight, and f3, king f2, bring the king closer, and enjoy a good Catalan position. F3 takes away a lot of good squares. So yeah, so for black it's a nightmare. This pawn on b6 is a weakness. So something like rook d4, knight c4 becomes a problem. The pawn on f7 is constantly challenged. Um, I guess knight b5 makes sense. Not a trade. So this knight on e8 now feels awkward. Oh, this I missed. This pin I missed. But maybe it's still okay. Take, take, and rook c6 is going to be a big problem. I'm not sure if he can allow that. This knight on f6 is feeling awkward. Yeah, so he has to drop something very quickly. Oh my goodness, so slow, so slow. <clears throat> 94, did I just miss something? Yeah, I guess I did. So the cheap threat is rook c8. Which uh, is not so easy actually to defend against. Yeah, that was stupid. Okay, should have given a check first. Oh, I'm blundered. Okay. Wasn't knight c6 the idea? Yeah. <clears throat> Let me check if there's somebody who plays with increment. Do, do, do. I can always try to create some custom games. Not really feeling up to a speed. Hey, almost checkmate! Appreciate that. How are you? Thank you for your sub. Maybe 3 plus 2. 3 plus 2, nobody's gonna play. Maybe 3 plus 1. Sometimes there are people who are playing this. Hey, okay. Thank you. Glad you appreciate it. Yeah, but the problem with 3 plus 1 is not many people play it. And uh, that's why 3 plus 0 is so popular. Many people play 3 plus 0, 3 plus 1. Nah. Yeah, it's not really that popular. But it allows at least not to, not to blunder a lot of things and think something yeah by the way almost checkmate we're gonna have a sub game a sub al 19 february if you're interested oh that's the same opponent okay maybe it's gonna be a catalan this time oh awesome awesome oh, okay here we go let me try to test something what should i do here 
Okay, castle, I guess, is mandatory. Queen C2. I'm not sure I understand the early idea of Queen C2. Maybe it's some trick to start earlier, C, Knight C3 and E4. Rook C1 is a modern move. I think the idea was to involve some Bishop C4 and C7, but I don't think it's dangerous. Yeah, this I don't remember. Th this is quite a modern approach as far as I understand. I guess I don't want to play a5, or do I? Okay, but I'll play a5. I'll try to counter the space advantage to play bishop a6 later. Maybe it's not a good idea. I don't know. I don't know this. I don't play the Catalan. How am I supposed to know? I play with black normally, uh, Queen's Indian. So knight c3 stops. Uh, it doesn't allow. I don't allow white to play knight c3 because I just take the pawn on c4. Otherwise, knight c3 is a very classy idea. Yeah, c takes, c takes. Uh, yeah, now the knight gets to b5, but maybe it's not a big deal. Yeah, no, this should be completely fine for me. Check to the queen. And take. I think he slightly misplayed the position. I'm actually thinking about taking over here. But uh, maybe it's not much. I mean, yeah, I guess it's just nothing. Knight b5, that's a nice square. Want to create some targets at kingside. And this idea of g5, g4 I've seen from some Carlsen's games to secure the outpost on e4 for the knight. Yeah, and white has nothing better than to trade the rooks. So king g7, king g6 are easy moves for me. Still the position is completely equal, I guess, but... Maybe I can try to keep the queens on the board, somehow try to bother white at the uh, king side. F3 I'll just gladly take, keeping my knight. Knight on b5 is doing much, he's not doing much. My knight on e4 feels at least doing something. I mean, if white wants, he can go for equality with knight c3, which he does. I'll try to keep it more entertaining with knight g5. Ideally, I would love to trade my bishop for the knight, so that I'm controlling those squares. I'll gladly trade the knight for the bishop. I mean, he's knight for my bishop. Now he trades. And of course, if I trade queens, then it's immediately draw. So I want to keep the game going for a while at least. Let's try to scare him a little. And yeah, I guess h4 is the last chance for me to do something in this game. I think he's worse. Now he is totally worse. Yeah, so yeah, h3, that's the best attempt he can do. g takes is interesting, actually. No, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Okay, let's take here, see what happens. Yeah, I guess it's not gonna be much. King takes on g3, that's a big question. Could he take with the king? I don't know. Well, looks fishy. Looks fishy, to be honest. Maybe he can. But now I can sacrifice the pawn. 
no, he's gonna be suffering for a long time if I'll if I won't blunder this of course so knight e4 is a tsar real tsar on e4 so I'm never risking this positionally wise but of course time could be an issue okay yeah that's quite accurate Oh, and he trades. Um, can you do that? Yeah, maybe he can. If he did it, then maybe he can do that. Uh, he has the H pawn. Yeah, I guess he can do that. So I have to close. I'm not sure if I have to close. I guess there's no progress here. Just a second. Let me check it if I have any ideas here. No, no, no. I'm not accepting a draw yet because it's a not, not a risk position for me. I think I can still push this. I think so at least. Just a second. I want to test this. I'm not playing for time. I want to test this if I can. No, I cannot. Yeah, okay, okay. I don't think I can win this. <clears throat> Hashtag chess is online. What are they doing? Training? So singing Ukrainian anthem? <laughs> oh, Semislav. Bummer. Now, what do I know here? I guess it's E3. Knight h4, I used to play this some years ago. I have some limited experience now. Queen c7, yeah, I guess that's the best move. What was the line? I think it was rook c1 something. And there's many tricky lines here. But normally what is just aiming for two bishops, something like take on g6 and then just grind it out. Or should I have made a long cast? I mean, I don't remember. Okay. I'm gonna wait for my opponent to make a castle so that only then I can take on g6. Okay, now it's the time, otherwise the h file is a little problem. I guess I want to reposition the bishop on f3. The bishop on d2 doesn't do much. c5. That's a move. I guess I can play f4. So c takes is either knight e5. Yeah, I guess it's knight e5. And this should be sort of better for me. Yeah, because I have a bishop, but okay, maybe it's not much. Okay, let's try to be tricky. And he is also trying to be tricky. So c takes knight e4, activates my knight. I don't want to take on c5 myself. Give him the opportunity. Yeah, it's a slav, I know. I mean, blame my opponent, not me. I did everything. I did everything to play. I'm not even playing d4 myself normally, so what do you want me to do? Uh, some interesting... I like actually this... I should be playing more d4s. I like the rising positions. They sort of suit my style. Whoa, are you sure you can do that? This is not on c6. It was a very risky choice. I guess he wanted to play knight c4, just noticed that the bishop on e7 is under attack. I guess so. I, I don't know. That was a slightly weird 
decision. Yeah, so I guess he just, just drops something now. Or maybe not. Or maybe not. What about this one? And bishop b4. Knight e6. Oh, it looks so dangerous. Yeah, I guess he's gonna drop something. Let's hope he cannot take on e3. And he can. Now, either I'm going to win a full rook, or he's going to resign a couple of moves. It's... Okay. Yeah, queen of two would be bishop c5, so he resigned. I was pretty sure I didn't blunder. Oh, he resigned because there's no mate and... Um... <laughs> My opponent at least is helping me to play the Catalan, so... Let's thank him for that. H4. I think this is sort of a Dubov's idea. He likes these H4s. Um, so it makes sense to open the position. I don't know much here. It just makes sense to open the position. Since White is playing some funny chess here, so can I. I'm not really caring about this extra pawn, I just um, want some activity, I can always drop it back. Knight g5. So that's knight b5 threat. h6, he's gonna ignore it, just sacrifice it. Queen d4 looks extremely risky, so it leaves me with either a6. I guess it's gonna be a6. Knight e4, knight e7, knight c5 something. I don't know what is this. e4. Actually, e4 looks good. Very good, actually. I think I'm in trouble here. e5, queen h7, mate is a big problem. I don't know. Can I survive this? Whatever. No, no time to think. Let's try to survive this. Oh, wait a sec. He takes with the pawn first. Oh, my goodness. I just missed that. I thought he's going to take here. And then I was uh, planning to drop a piece with G takes, H takes, and a 5. Yeah, this I just forgot. Okay, I guess I have to play this. But this is just dead lost. He's gonna take g6, king g7. Now the knight is gonna come here. This is lights out, but I'll try. I can always resign. Now, but the stage war is interesting, actually. You have to admit. I I don't know what's the latest in the Catalan. I remember... Maybe it was Duba or Carlsen, but they are the same, essentially. Yeah, they're using those ideas. Hey, Soundly. Take care. Have fun. Can I, by the way, take this pawn on g5? I guess it answers the question. Knight e4 is a big problemo incoming. There's nothing I can do about it. I just have to sit and pray. Sit and pray. I'm not getting slaughtered very quickly. 
Because materially wise... Ah, it's equal. Oh, materially wise, it's equal. Okay. Maybe I'm going to survive this. Somehow. So he wants to sacrifice on e6. Let's not give him the chance. Knight e6, queen g6 was the threat. Strategically wise, I'm completely lost. Time to eliminate this guy. Yeah, of course, now the H file is burning. Can you do that? Ah, I guess he can. Yeah, poor knight. I mean, <laughs> I just, I just hope I won't get mated very quickly here. And, oh, look at he's down last half a minute. It's probably the most ugly position I've had for years. Okay, at least I'm not going to get mated here. Or maybe I will. So he's going for the mate. Who can blame him? Okay, let's not miss the mate. Oh, there's something hanging. Still, maybe that wasn't a good choice. Ah, it's so ugly. Oh, wait a second, we're playing with increment. I completely forgot. <laughs> completely forgot. Whoa. What is he doing there? Giving me chances. I guess it's just going to be a draw. I could still try to press though, I have the pawn on A2. Let's try to... What? Why did he resign? I don't think that was necessary. I thought that was very close to drawish. Maybe that was losing, I don't know. Of course, uh, undeserved. Yeah, finally the bishop got out, but he just uh, focused too much on trying to checkmate me. That was very ugly knight and bishop, and it got out, and somehow it uh, contributed something. Okay, let's try something else. I don't know. Can I play here bishop d2? Maybe this queen b3 is not even necessary, I don't know. Never really bothered to understand it. 
Okay, now that the castle is, I can trade. And one of the ideas also is take on d5, so that he doesn't have the d takes on c4 and c5 ideas. Yeah, c takes is just solid. I don't know where to position the bishop. Any endgame, I'm happy. Knight c6. I'm not so sure about this. Okay, but there. Ah, there's that. Did I miss that? I just missed knight before. It's a draw, right? How can I continue here? Rook b8, rook a8 is going to be an eternal attack. Maybe he can continue this. Yeah, I just messed it up. Okay, but there. But I mean, he he doesn't have to repeat. But he could try to imprison the queen somehow with a6. But I don't see how that how that is gonna happen. Yeah, it's a draw. Sure, it's a draw. It's not they mixed it up, but I wouldn't say I had a lot of advantage there. Another Catalan, right? Here we go. <laughs> He's just also playing for fun. I mean, not everybody is playing for writing or blitz uh, or to crash everybody and flagging. What did I play here? Ddex on c4, right? Maybe that's not a good move. I don't know. Let's try knight bd7. And... Can I be a little funny here? Whatever. I mean, this looks fun. Because he has wasted time on h4. Maybe I can try to play gambit here. <laughs> you liked my... My Dutch, okay. Have to play b4 so that my bishop is not dead like last time. If necessary, I'll just gonna, I'm just gonna sack the pawn on b4. I don't care. The bishop on a6 is all that matters. It's all that matters. All right. e4 I don't think this is good just a second so he wants to push e5 fall for the same okay I guess I have to take but maybe it's good maybe it is good maybe it's not Knight e4, bishop e4, knight f6, bishop c6, queen d4, bishop a8, rook a8, long castle. Unclear. Maybe I should have went for this, I don't know. So I guess he has to go something like Long Castle and then storm everything at the king's side. It's also going to be fun. I like this idea of h4. I'll try to remember this. I don't know it. I hadn't, hadn't employed it myself. Check to the knight. Yeah, I guess it would have been more fun. Should have sacrificed it. This is more positional. Knight g5 makes sense. Oh, he doesn't want it. He doesn't want it.
Let's try to provoke some weaknesses. It's not a good move, but trying to provoke some f3. Make it more complicated. Knight e4 would have been more simple. Yeah, knight g5. Now I got what I wanted. Okay, there. Knight f2 is still a threat. Maybe not so easy to defend. Bishop e3, he just drops. Woo! Bishop f4. I accept. I accept your challenge, mister. Maybe I have some ideas to sacrifice the exchange. Sure, let's sacrifice. Let's sacrifice. It's almost an equal trade. A4, B3, something. Bishop h3. He wants to sacrifice something. I'm not going to stop him. I guess white is simply faster in his attack. f5. No time to calculate. Much forward. Boom. I guess it's just losing, but... This is my last chance. I... Messed it up big time. Not sure what I'm even aiming for. Where's my grandiose idea? Some cheapos, maybe. Okay, this was a completely fishy approach. Whoa, d5. Check. Yeah, queen e5 is... Bleh. Is there some secret escape? Magical escape somehow? I see none. Sacrifice and f7 doesn't make me happy. Bishop c2 check is just a couple of checks. Bishop b3 is too slow. I can't resent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm um, finishing, I guess. Oh, bummer. Finishing the match, little match. Oh, why did I... No, no, no. Thank you. Appreciate that. It's too late already. Uh, so, I'm finishing my stream. I would like to remind that um, uh, this Sunday at 12 Central European time, I'll have an adoption match against Pong Gruber. You can check it out. I would appreci appreciate if you would join me and enjoy it together with me. Books for, by former chess prodigies? I think there was a book by David Navarra. He is a former child prodigy. And I think Navarra recently re released a book. Please, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I think so. It was sort of an autobiography, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to adopt him. <laughs> so the adoption rules state if I win 10-0, David Navara. David Navara. He is the leading che Czech grandmaster. A very nice person. Happened to know him in real life as well. One R. One R. Yes. And I think, I think there was a book about his life or best games or something like that. I don't remember if he wrote it. At least it was about him. I mean, so 
you could you could start with that book. I don't know how good it is. I guess it is good. Should be. And uh, yeah, and the streamer uh, the streamer next sub al is gonna be on nineteenth February, but I'll try to organize something next week as well. I just don't know it yet. I, I try to make something exciting for my subs every single week, so that you can follow for something interesting. Yeah, you're welcome for the Catalan ideas. I realize it wasn't really top-notch theory, just but just basically toying with the ideas here and there. And uh, that's that's how I treat the Catalan, and it it helped me even at the grammar level. So, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, just a second, I'll check. Maybe there's somebody I could raid you to. I always try to do a raid in the end. And there's just Dojo, there's Chiquitas. What are Chiquitas doing? Men's with the league from amateur who does it, but it's not me. <laughs> Maybe we should yeah, raid the Chiquitas. How, how, what do you think? What did you resign? They're a trio from Slovenia. I get it. Did you want to offer a draw? Thank you almost, Checkmate. Appreciate that. Well, who do you want to raid? Okay. Any ideas? Why, why, why did he resign? Let me check who else is there. I don't get it. Uh, Miro is doing in Let's Russian. Go. Hashtag chess. But hashtags are already raided some time ago. Okay, over there. Oh, no. Let's raid you to some chiquitas. Oh no. She detect Wait, what do you mean? Chi Red choice? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you guys for following me today oh, here. And... All of the subs again could sub me today. Appreciate that really. It allows me to continue the streams. Make them a little easier to happen. And see you on Sunday. Take care. Have fun. Be good. And enjoy the remaining weekend. Did you miss anything new? Well